Welcome to Dwarven Forge. This is everything you need to know about our terrain in 60 seconds. Ready? Let's go. We hand sculpt our pieces for maximum detail and artistry, infusing passion into every millimeter of our work. Everything is available beautifully hand painted so you can start playing right away. Or you can choose unpainted to paint everything yourself. Our pieces are completely modular so you can use the same sets to create a new adventure every time. Most pieces have embedded anchor magnets that affix to our terrain trays for secure building and for revealing rooms as your players discover them. We create everything out of Dwarvenite, our top secret PVC formula that's nearly indestructible. We pack our pieces with as many features as possible, such as swappable LEDs to quickly change the look of your scene. We offer magnetic accessories to add flavor or increase the danger. A one inch tactical grid is sculpted into our floors, hidden in dungeon flagstones, natural rocks, or sticks and plants. In addition to sculpted pieces, we make terrain trays to use as a vibrant graphic base for your build. We offer a range of environments, including dungeons, caverns, cities, castles, sewers, forests, mountains, streets, burrows, ice, and hellscape. And that's just the beginning. We have a passionate fan base who can tell you all about it. And that's everything you need to know about Dwarven Forge in 60 seconds. The games we play are the stories we create. The fortress doors swing open. Every story is unique. And the sound of war drums rises. Sometimes our stories come to us when we least expect them. We need to be ready no matter where inspiration strikes. And sometimes our stories are told over great distances. No matter where your journey leads you or how your story is told. The games we play are the stories we create. Sirenscape can help make yours epic. Sirenscape is searchable, fast, and customizable from any device with no need to pre-install any sound. Adding epic atmosphere to your game has never been easier. Hello everyone and welcome to the finale of season three of End of the Mist. It is our Curse of Strahd campaign. Just want to go through a quick, a couple quick announcements and then we will jump right into all of the action. There's, uh, it's a special four hour session tonight uh, to wrap up the season and then we're to off for two weeks and then we're back after two weeks for another, uh, for another season of Into the Mist. We wanted to make sure um, that we didn't lose momentum with the Discord and everything that we're doing. And of course, the Mists won't let us leave. Let's do these announcements real quick and then jump into the action. First, I want to thank Dungeons & Dragons for creating this incredible game that we play uh, week in and week out. Um, we have three main title sponsors. The first is Hero Forge. Hero Forge has an online... Uh, miniature creator you can download stls as well as create avatars for your characters you can check them out at www.heroforge.com and all of our player characters 
are created using Hero Forge. Also want to thank uh, Dave, your mic's on. Uh, also want to thank uh, <sighs> Vidal and Grimms, who is our other main title sponsor. Uh, an incredible company that makes premium boxed adventures for your D&D experience. You can check them out at www.beetleandgrims.com and we will be doing a giveaway for Van Richten's box. Uh, well, Van Richten's guide to Ravenloft box from Beetle and Grimm. It is a silver edition. Uh, we're going to launch that giveaway tomorrow. It's going to run for two weeks until the premiere of the next season. Uh, and of course, Matt will be joining us again in the role of Rictavio this evening and we're very excited to have him. Thanks, Matt. They can hear you uh, if you're there. Um, also, want to thank Sirenscape, our third oh, main. Yeah, Matt Lillard. <laughs> <Woo -hoo>! Yeah, <laughs> that, that's Matt Lillard. Uh, also, want to thank Sirenscape, an incredible <laughs> online media player for your tabletop RPG experiences. Um, you can uh, play sound effects and uh, moods for uh, everything that you have, from sci-fi to D and D. Pathfinder and a bunch of other things. Uh, www.sirenscape.com slash realmsmith will let them know that we sent you and then you can also find all of the stuff that we've created for them um, for their system. Uh, so check them out. I want to thank all of our product sponsors, WizKids for a lot of the minis that we use at the table, Dwarven Forge for a lot of the terrain, and we'll check in real quick right now with Mithril Armory. That is Dave and Joel. Uh, we'll bring them back real quick. They launched a Kickstarter today, which funded before you could even post about it. Is that right, Dave? I heard. <laughs> yeah, we had launched and I went to put the now live thing on, on Instagram and it was already funded. <laughs> That's great. So it, this is the second iteration of the tin tw uh, uh, the tin twenties, which are now the called tin 20s, the tin cathedrals, yes. right? Yeah, so we got a whole bunch of feedback. We we, we actually sold 3,000 of the tin 20s. And we got a lot of good feedback about how to improve them. And so we did all of that and built out the whole set and got them designed by great artists like yourself. Uh, and we'll be unlocking the, uh, the the different designs as we go. That's awesome. And, uh, and so these are the difference between these and the old ones. The other ones were just kind of tin, steel colored. These are actually full, uh, full color or they have colors within them right different designs yeah, yeah they're yeah. they're they're still metal you still have to fold them they are a thicker gauge of metal um they're they're more durable uh they're less pointy so you don't uh you you can't as easily cut your fingers but you can still rounded still, the don't... edges for some some people who <laughs> are worried people. about their thumbs don't feed it to, to toddlers that's the main thing <laughs> um feed it and uh and, and yeah so they're color now which is awesome Awesome. Cool. Uh, and so where can they check that out? So we set up a link just for you guys. So if they go to realmsmith.mithralarmory.com, that'll take them there and we'll know that they came from you. Awesome. Well, check it out. Uh, support it. It's an amazing Kickstarter and they're really awesome and fun. And uh, they no longer double for a bladed weapon, but um, they're awesome <laughs> to put together and fold. So thanks, guys. We'll be right back. Thanks. All Jay. right. Uh, and also, of course, as usual, uh, Mithril is uh, sponsoring our Nat 20s with their Stoneheart um, dice. You can check that out soon, too. They have a bunch of Kickstarters coming, but this will show every time that somebody rolls a natural 20. Thank you to Mithril Armory. And thank you also to, for D&D Beyond. All of our online stuff, our characters, our encounters are all powered by D&D Beyond. So thank you for that. Um, we started a wellness challenge a week ago. Uh, for those of you who have uh, issues or are sensitive uh, with talks about uh, um, fitness or weight loss, you can tune out for a second and come back in a couple minutes. But um, just chatted with Dave a week ago and said, hey, uh, I've put a little bit of fluff on during COVID and I want to get healthy <laughs> again. Little. And Sorry, my mic was on again. Sorry, Jay. And... Uh, <laughs> So anyways, so we launched it and we uh, asked the community to join us um, in whether it be mental wellness or physical wellness or whatever your goals are to have your, your personal goals. Um, this week, we've been tracking it with the cast and Brandon is well ahead uh, in his goals um, of the rest of us. But um, I feel great. I woke up um, doing some intermittent fasting. So the third day in, I woke up energized more than I ever have been. My, my mind's clearer and it just feels really great to, uh, to be getting healthy again. Um, and so I'm excited and the rest of you join us. We'll be posting things on a regular basis and updates and so on of our progress through June. 
Um, so we're excited to see all of your progress and see all of your goals uh, met and exceeded. Uh, we do have a Discord slash Patreon uh, experience. If you're interested in playing Vistani on our Discord, you can do that by heading to patreon.com slash realmsmith and joining at one of the tiers, which gives you access to certain at, uh, levels within our Discord. There are a bunch of free Discord channels that you can just go in and hang out. And, uh, I think including the Wellness Challenge uh, uh, ch channel is also in there um, in the free stuff, but we also have this incredible uh, experience community which role play on a regular basis um, and it's a lot of fun um, lots of updates coming uh, between now and the new season and so we're excited to have you all we want to thank our smith guardians who are the keepers and creators of a lot of our lore and our stuff for discord and for the community as well as our realm watchers which are our moderators and a lot of them are in the chat tonight um, we also launched m a new merch it's another awesome way to support the channel, um, including our pride gear for this month. So you can check that out and head to our merch store. The links under the videos in each of the videos. This Thursday, we are going to have an episode of Aftermath and we will have the incredible Matt Lillard actually joining us this Thursday. Um, Ow, Matt Lillard! <laughs> Hell yeah! We'll Is that be true. <laughs> yeah, we'll be chatting with him. Uh, we announced it actually last aftermath, uh, but uh, but yeah, we'll be chatting with him about Beetle and Grim boxes, about his experiences with Realmsmith, um, about um, all of the wonderful stuff happening in his world this Thursday. So we're excited. If you like what you see tonight, consider subscribing, hitting that little bell icon on YouTube, and um, following us. Like that video to let other people know uh, how awesome this incredible cast is. Um, as well, follow us on Twitch, and without further ado, one last time this season, let us venture into the mists. <laughs>
murderer standing over him. Uh, this is an extra long session. Remember that, everyone. Uh, so hopefully you're all hydrated and all of that. Uh, and let's dig right in. Last time, uh, the last thing we did was it was Esmeralda's turn. Um, you were inside the tent looking out the flap and you saw that Rictavio had a guardian standing behind him, a visage of his son with uh, kind of dragon wings looming over him. And in that moment, something clicked for you uh, and you finished with the words, all the, this whole time. Um, and that is where we left you. It is your turn, Rictavio, you were on deck. Um, what has happened to the, the tiger? Can you remind me? The tar tiger was polymorphed into a cat and is now sitting just in front of Rictavio here, just outside the tent. Um, I'm going to run out of the tent. I need, I'm, I'm running towards Rictavio and what I think is still Erasmus. Standing okay. there. Okay. Um, and, and you can tell. Actually, give me an Arcana check real quick. Okay. Fourteen. With a fourteen, you can tell that this isn't the same apparition that you saw earlier. Um, that this is something that has been apparently created by Rectavio. You, you do know that this is a spell that he's created. It looks slightly different. The features aren't as clear as potentially they were when he passed. Um, it's, it's almost like it's based on a memory of who he was, not the apparition that you saw. Um, so you know that they're not linked and that they're not the same. Uh, but you do rush out to him and you stand now beside a little kitty cat that sits kind of looking up at him. And the kitty cat looks like the saber tooth tiger. It even has little saber teeth um, and stripes, but it kind of sits looking up at him, its tail wagging behind him, uh, two Vistani at his back trying to attack him. Uh, the, the guardian guarding Rictavio. There's, oh, is, is Rictavio being attacked? Yeah, so there are two Vistani that have been attacking him during this time, yes. But you can tell okay. that they have like, ra like uh, d uh, energy damage across them as this creature is clearly defending Rectavio. Okay, uh, I'm still going to hit one of them uh, with a firebolt. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, but I rolled an eight, so I don't know about that. Uh, an eight's gonna miss. Yeah. Okay. I'm yeah. I I'm a little I'm a little distracted. Yeah. Yeah. You shoot the fireball. It misses and it ignites against a, a one of the Vardos, just behind them. Okay. Um. Anything else you want to do with your turn? Yeah. I'm I'm shouting at uh, <laughs> Rictavio. Why have you not told me? There is no time, child. We will discuss it later. To arms. <laughs> Death is upon us! These aren't the droids you're seeking. <laughs> <laughs> they know mine behind the man in the hat. <laughs> in sooth, child, fight! With that, Rectavio, it's your turn. I uh, Have I seen if Felfer has fallen? Yes. I break and run. Okay. I come for you, my friend. I lost my voice there for a second. I'm on my way! With that, um, one of them, you feel kind of the wind off of one of the scimitars from the bandit, uh, sorry, the Vistani behind you, and it just misses as you break to go. Uh, does your guardian ch uh, chase you? Oh, yes. Within 10 feet of it all. Are time. you dashing to get to Falfa? Yes. Uh, yes. Sorry, so. 5, 10, 50, 20, 25, 30, 5, 10, 15, 20, with 20 feet, you come to Falfer, his, um, the Vistani that stands over him stands just away from you. Do you want to be within melee range of that? Yeah, I feel like I have to, it's hard to see, Jay. Yeah. I'm old and my eyes are weary. So yeah. the, I, I'll take any attack of opportunity to get my hands on him. Yeah. So that, I, I, let me be honest, let me back up for a second. Sure. 
Do I do I get the sense he's in dire danger? Can I? Should I do it? Give me uh, a medicine check. Uh, but but I'm far away, so in combat. Oh, okay. And I see him, you know what I mean? Like I want to. I don't want to meta game. Yeah. So I'm gonna say from a distance. If you want to tell before you move that he's in in trouble, I'd, I'd give you a medicine check with disadvantage because of the distance and because of the craziness that's, ha that's happening. If you want to break and dash and get there, I'll still give you a medicine check, but you can have a better look at him. Yes, I'll do that. Okay, just just straight medicine check then, please. Uh, straight medicine, uh, 14. Okay, uh, you can tell that he is not breathing. All right. Um, so and I he is on take, death's door. So I will take any uh, attack of opportunity to lay hands yep. on him. Okay, uh, you've already used your action to dash, though. Okay. Um, that, I, I mean, I, there's, if there's anything I can do, can I bind? I mean, there's nothing I can do, right? Not without an action, no. Room. Unless you have a cantrip that'll heal. I don't. Okay. Um, and you said the, the, the guardian follows you? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. That's my, that's my, uh, that's my action. Can you command the guardian with a bonus action? How do, how do you command the guardian? Um, let me look it up if you want to move forward. Sure. Uh, I think I, I think what they do, I, I think they, oh you know what I have a ball of fire as a bonus action. Remember I cast I cast spear. Yeah. Is that a concentration spear. check? Is that a concentration spell? It is a concentration check. Yes. Is the guardian oh, a concentration? Guess, oh yeah, flaming spear is a concentration check. Is guardian as well as a concentration? No, it is not. Okay, then yeah. your 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 sphere of fire still still exists in the tent. So as my bonus, I'll move it towards me and put it on this Vistani right in front of me. Okay. It can move 60 feet in a turn as a bonus action. Okay, so you watch as it basically like rips through and smolders through the side of the tent, yeah, smashing into the Vistani. 16 decks. 16 decks for half damage. Failed. Yes! Take 14 fire right to your face. <laughs> 14 fire. punk. Get away! As you watch it smash into him, his clothes starting to ignite, um, not even realizing as it just hit him in the back as he's watching you. Um, what do you want your kitty to do? As you still control your kitty in kitty form. I want I, 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 a break, direct break. Okay, all right. So Please your don't call my saber to the kitty. <laughs> it's a form that I don't appreciate. Well, like. right now she's <laughs> right now it's a kitty cat. Um, so she'll come over to you as well. No break, just go break. They right go child. away. Right okay. from the forest. <laughs> okay, it's running towards the forest. <laughs> All right. Um, Noggins, you're up. Dimitri, you're on deck. Okay, so I have a good perception. I just saw Esmeralda run after Rictavio. I just saw Rictavio run off. So the first thing I'm going to do is run towards Esmeralda. Okay. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 is your movement or 40? Uh, 30 is my movement. I will okay. I will dash to get there. Okay. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 puts you right beside Esmeralda facing the Vistani that were trying to hurt Rictavio. I see her and then I start to look around. Do I see where Rictavio went? Uh, give me a survival check. Uh, as well, you can see that these Vistani are in really bad shape. They have massive gashes um, with wounds that are actually cauterized. 27. A broad, sorry? Sorry, 27 for 27. survival. Uh, with a survival check, yes, you can absolutely see where Rictavio has gone. Um, you turn to the right and just even around the corner through the horses, you see this massive uh, shield guardian behind him is Rictavio as he's obviously rushed over in that direction. With that, you also see a unconscious Falfer on the ground in front of him. Uh, and you see a Vistani standing over them with a ball of fire right at their shoulder, um, which has impacted them. You get the idea with all of this that Rictavio is trying to help Falfer. Um, I get that specifically. You know okay, what? Give, good. Me, give me an insight check. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, no, okay. Me... Uh, that's a 16 and a die, which makes that a 21. Yeah, 20, with a 21, you absolutely can tell um, that he's trying to help Felfer with his body language. Okay. Then I, I look at Esmeralda and I say, please explain to me everything that's going on, but it looks like Felfer's not okay. Um, and I'm going to swipe my um, sickle through the air 
and as I do um, um, a couple of um, just like small fey like things just kind of float out I'm not like summoning anything this is off flavor um, and they all encircle the five feet that Balfour is at. Okay. Um, it's a sixty foot spell, and I'm pretty sure I can get. I can. I just use it in sixty feet. Yep. Um, as I cast Healing Spirit. Okay. Um. Uh. And then when he starts his turn there, he will automatically get one d six. Um. He, uh, hit points. No action required. Uh. And yeah. And what, sorry, what's the, what the kind of all just like? Since, what'd you say? What's the radius of the spell? Right. The radius is five. It's a five foot. It's a five foot a cube. Okay. So it's literally where Falfor is. Okay. You can see like a, a bunch of like ladybugs or or uh, not ladybugs, fireflies just kind of swirling in that five foot cube. Okay. So um, he, around him. So he doesn't get that until the beginning of his turn. Until the beginning of his turn. Does he take his death save before the beginning of his he turn? He does not. Question. When he starts his turn, he will get healed. That save happens at the end of your turn, correct? I believe that's the case. Hold on, let me check a thing. Check that real quick. Yeah, but, but, but uh, I'm more than positive that him starting the turn, he will get healed before he has to make a save. Okay, Esmeralda. Uh, but am I able to respond? Yes. I'll point to Rictavio and I, I'll say, he's a friend, Falfur is down, the rest I'll have to explain later. Okay, I don't like it, but okay, that's me. All right. Uh, Dimitri, you're on deck. Uh, you're sure you're up, sorry. Nice dog. Okay, so I I would have seen the giant ball of fire rip across the t inside of the tent, yeah. burn a hole through, yeah. and land on the outside. Yeah, you don't see, from your from your position, you don't see where it would have landed, but you saw it rip through the side of the tent and leave like a, like a smoldering hole. But all you can see through that hole at the angle that you are is a uh, horse, uh, horses. Actually, horses in the back of a large ethereal creature um, with uh, like dragon wings. Um, I can tell you right now, Xanathar specifically says if two or more things happen at the same time, the player who controls the creature decides the order they happen. Okay. <clears throat> um, okay, uh, so watching the ball of fire go through the side of the tent, I'm going to, because the boy I was trying to untie He's not really wanting my help. <laughs> yep. Uh, I'm going to go and just look through the hole that it made in the tent. Okay. Um, and then I, am I looking at it? Yeah, and so you gather, as you move over that hole, you gather the whole thing that's going on. You see these fireflies kind of hovering over Falfur. You see Rictavio standing over him. You see Aragal behind him, beside him on fire with a guardian beside behind defending Rictavio. Okay. Um, assuming that the the only person I don't know is the one causing all the trouble on, over there, how can I reach uh, to be next to that person, uh, next to the fire? 5, 10, 15. You can go 5, 10, 15. 20 puts you here. Uh, sorry, 15, 20, 25, 30. You'd have to dash. So 30 puts you just outside the, the tent. Um, through the hole, and then you'd have to dash to get anywhere else. You're right here. Okay, then um, I will. Uh, I'll dash to reach the um, the enemy there. Okay. And I'll turn to Octavio and say, Octavio, what is going on? Okay, you are now on the other side of. There you go. Okay. It was hard to do Twitch and respond off mute. I say, he's fallen. I'm here to protect him. We've been stoning. It's time to bring them down. They are evil incarnate. We rise. We defeat them. No more words. Attack, boy. <laughs> All right. So uh, one Vistani turns and runs. Um, he is not within five feet of you, Esmeralda, so he takes off that way. Um, actually, they're both not, because you had stopped. Rictavio was kind of in between you, so they can disengage without you. Um, and he is also going to run, uh, as they are very, very, very injured. Um, 
At this point, you all hear um, more Vardo doors opening as more uh, Vistani start to kind of pile out of the circle of Vardos that exist at random points around. Um, Travas, you hear two behind you. Uh, and Sterling, one of the ones that is facing you attacks. That's going to be a miss. The other one attacks. That is also going to be a miss as I roll two fours. Um, and the one just inside, he fell, right? Last turn, he was still alive. But he fell. Th did he fall through or did he die through? Do you remember, guys? There I don't remember. One, there was one that fell in. Honestly, you, a lot Sterling. happened last episode, so it's like I, yeah. I I think he fell. I, I I feel like he rolled a natural one. Yeah, and, and he fell. fell. Okay, so he gets backed yeah. up and he attacks Sterling in the back. Uh, Sterling, that is going to be a probably not enough. An eighteen. Uh, sorry, sixteen. That's not going to be enough. Um. And then we're going to have one come out behind you. You hear it open up, uh, Dimitri behind you. And then Travas behind you, somebody opens up the door. Um, I don't think Luvash actually came through the tent yet last session, right? You just spoke no. to him. He hadn't had a turn yet. Um, right. So before he, uh, so he comes out, he looks back at you. Again, he was just about to slash you kind of in the face. He stops as he heard you. As you kind of move aside, he moves, because you had moved aside, right? To let him through? Yep. So he is going to, with Arabelle, back out. And he starts to untether some horses, a horse from the side of the tent. Um, his Vistani that was with him, guarding him. Um, when he sees him pass you, the one kind of comes out of, the, of, of, of its Vardo, holds a crossbow and levels a crossbow at you, but realizes that you're helping Luvash escape, turns his aim towards Sterling and takes a shot. That is not gonna be enough, Sterling, as a bolt, ding, deflects off you and hits the tent. Um, the one behind you, Dimitri, is going to level his crossbow and shoot at you. That is an 18. And misses. That misses as, again, off your off the side of your shield. You weren't expecting it as he kind of poked out of his Vardo and shot at you. Um, and that misses. We have got one, one, sorry. One, two have come out, that's fine. Okay. Um, back up to the top of the order. Travas, you're up, Sterling, you're on deck. Yeah, so, Travas is really confused at this point. Yeah. <laughs> he thought Esmeralda was protecting them, he went and freed them, and then they shot his friends. Uh, I'd like to look over. Well, you can look. You look to your left, and you see that there's two Vistani fighting, or three Vistani fighting Sterling right now. Yeah, and the, and the guy shot him with the crossbow. Yeah, just right here, and then the guy shot him with the crossbow. Yeah. Uh, I I think to make things easier for you. As uh, Luvash is untying the horse, Arabelle looks at you, panicked, but smiles. Yeah, I'm like totally a traitor now. I don't, I don't even know what I'm doing. Um, uh, I'm going to run over to help Sterling. Okay. Right to Sterling. here. Sterling. I don't know who they're fighting. <laughs> and I'm all just whoever he's he's attacked that's damaged from Sterling, that's who I'm gonna attack. Okay, so yeah, the, the guy that's closest to you is this one here. You're gonna go ahead and attack. Yeah, I'm gonna give him the old short sword dagger combo. So it's uh, 25 to hit with the first one and 15 to hit with the second. Those are both hits. 
Uh, and that'll be seven plus eight. So 15 plus my sneak attack. Uh, oh, 21. I rolled two ones and two twos. 21 damage? He, he, uh, yeah. Yeah, with 21, he wasn't expecting it from behind, and you come up and you just run him through as he falls to his knees and then unconscious. Yeah, I, I, and he holds his dagger and short sword up, like, looking at Sterling, like, like was that what I was supposed to do? <laughs> um. Okay, uh, next is... Sterling, you're up. Falfrey, you're on deck. All right, so through the hole, I can probably see that the the kid was not cut free, right? Sorry, what do you mean? Sorry, there, there's a kid tied up. Yeah, to a you pole can see you can see through the tent that yeah. Yeah, now I really want to go and help him, but at the same time, I don't want to leave Shavas with these guys. Um, I'm going to sheath my sword and put my hands up to these people and say. You already understand that you cannot harm me. We came to speak with you, not to fight with you. What will you do now? The next hit you take on me will be your death. Okay, and you're kind of saying that to the to the other two that are still fighting you? To, yeah, to the, the Vistani that are still there. Okay. Um, give me a uh, intimid... Uh, whichever one. I guess it's an intimidation check. Seven. I'm I'm very scary. Um. Um. You notice that they look over at Luvash starting to mount a horse, and they attempt to take a step back. Do you allow them to? I do. Oh, actually, they start to take a step back. They don't actually because it's not their turn. Um. Okay, um, but at this point, they appear like they're considering the situation, and you think that they're probably understanding what's going on, um, and that you see kind of a change in their in their disposition. Falfrey, you're up. Esmeralda, you're on deck. Um, okay, so I uh, I rolled that d6 for health, and it gave me three health. Uh, I am back in the game. Yes, you I'm are back. back in. <laughs> I was so, so sure I was going to die. I don't know why. I just felt like I was going to die. Okay. Um, so, yay. Uh, that That's three hit points. Um, I'm going to like, <gasps> and uh, immediately recognize, uh, crap, I'm not dead yet. And uh, do a cure wounds on myself. Okay. Um, at... Jay, I'm gonna do that all the way up at second level. Okay. So um, that'll be for 17 points of healing. Okay. And uh, and with that, I will stand to my feet in a kind of a crouch stance, take a look around, and is uh, do I notice who do I notice around me? Um, so Dimitri's at your left, Rictavio's to your right, Aragal's right in front of you. There's a ball of fire on him at his back and there is a shield guarding behind Rictavio to your right. And there's okay. a bunch of fireflies. Uh, yes, and the and the fairy fireflies around me. I'm I'm going to say uh whoever whoever did this, I, I owe you one. I was I was definitely not coming back from that one. And uh and I'll just uh step back maybe fifteen feet from the fight if if I'm not going to cause an op uh attack of opportunity. Uh, you cast a spell, um, so you would get an attack of opportunity because you can't disengage. Okay. So you okay. can absolutely try. I'll just, you, you know what? Do. I'll just stay put, crouch stance, and uh, and then I'll yeah, I'll take my fifteen points of healing. Okay. Um, all right, Esmeralda, you're up. Octavio, you're on deck. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I can't see where I am. What? I know that the two Vistani fled. What other enemies are near me at the moment? So you were here. There is no other en enemy near you that you can see. 
Noggins is beside you. All the action is happening to the right around the, the, the tent. And you hear, you heard combat, which seemed to quiet down through the tent at the back where the rest of them were. But it's quieted now. Yes. So I'll go over to where the action is. Okay. Uh, do you want to go through the tent or do you want to go around the tent? I will go around the tent. 30 puts you there, not quite in the fight, but you are about 10 feet from Octavio at that point. Okay. Uh, but what can I see about like what's going on? Um, this... Yeah, you see that Falfur is standing. He just heals himself. You see Dimitri to his left, Octavio to his right. You see his guardian behind him, and you see Aragal, who has currently uh, just been impacted by a big sphere of fire. Okay, and is he within reach of me? Rectavio? No, he's not yet. He's not still Rectavio. Ten. Oh. Uh, the Guardian? Who is it? Er no, Er was, was his name? Er uh, no, Ergal? and um, I'm going to say the Guardian is a friendly, so you'd have to take a dash at 5, 10, 15, 20 feet to get there. Okay, I'll wait at this point. Mm. If I'm not within line. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, you're here currently, and that's that's the distance. This is Aragal here, so mm -hmm. you've got a bit of distance. Okay. But is he with? Is he within the line of like a, of a spell attack? Yes, but you would hit Rictavio on the way through, and the Guardian. Don't want to do that, so I will wait. Okay. I mean, unless it's a spell that you can target one person, but if it hits anything on its way, it's gonna it's gonna hit other people. Oh, well, um, like lightning bolt would hit if it went through, um, but something yeah, else. Yeah, I'm not going to cast lightning bolt, but yeah. like if I did a fire bolt, yep. that's That'd towards be fine. one. Okay, so I will do that. Ooh, but that's only a 12 to hit. Um, that does not hit. Yeah, I am not rolling digital dice anymore. Um, for today. You were just being super careful trying to fire through a group. And yeah. Unfortunately, it went wide. Okay. Uh, Rictavio, you're up. Noggins, you're on deck. Uh, Not to be that person, but I just want to make sure I got to say, did oh boy that actually hit Falfer, did he get a turn? Uh, Aragal didn't actually get a turn. It's okay. I missed it. Okay. No, okay. I'm just trying to turn. figure out where he's Take at. Take your turn. I shall not win this battle. <laughs> you passed on an effing turn. Take your turn. <laughs> I guess enough. He went with like the general group of Vistania not. That's all I'm trying to figure it out. Uh, yeah, he he should have actually. I I missed it, but it's good. I, he oh, was. He, I do know if he's not taking his turn, I'm not taking my turn. <laughs> Lillard, I will I will dimension door to your house. All right. <laughs> if he's not smart enough to take his turn, I blast him again for a sphere. Roll a fort. No, no, he's gonna take his turn first, Octavio. He attacks you. Oh, I see. Uh, and that's gonna be a uh, thirteen to hit, Octavio. You miss you fool. Okay. As he's trying to put out the flames and tries to attack you at the same time. Uh, okay. Sorry, you were up. Yeah, oh yes, I'm up. Now I blast him with my spear. Roll a 14 deck save. Passes. Half. So half points? Yeah. Okay, what is that? Um, it is, sorry, I was pushing buttons. Uh, seven, uh, eight. He takes eight damage. He eight. made his save. Yeah. All right. Um, there's that. And then I'll lay hands. That's a bonus action. And I will hear, heal Felfer. Okay. I'm assuming, I see he's up and moving, but he's not, um, he doesn't seem to be a full, correct? No, I'm still very damaged. Yeah, yeah he's still very damaged. damaged. I'm going to cast a Cure Wounds. Okay. Um, I'm going to cast, a, I'm going to cast a fifth level spell on you, my friend. I miss you, boy! Ah. 30! You know, well, okay, Take so, 30. Uh, rece 30. receiving the jolt, I'm like, yeah, this is great! And, um, and uh, yeah, so well, how many do I get? As, as I lay my hands on you, um, you can see the energy start to move from me to you. T it take 30 yeah. points of healing. Oh! I literally go, oh! Oh! Welcome back uh, to the fight, my friend. Really quickly, uh, Falfer, take four more, uh, 
So I have to take four more points of uh, healing because I did that spell through this uh, moon sickle, and you get extra healing because of that. Sorry. Oh wow. Nice. Okay. Uh, so that's th so you got me third. So I'm at I'm at max basically. And are those additional on top? Oh, if you or those max, are just you max. okay. Max. Max. Okay. It is. Okay. Cool. Um, one quick question, DM. Yep. Te technicality here. Yeah. Since I died. Yeah. Is the hag's curse still there? Um, you didn't technically die. I'd have to look at that. Um, okay. You're gonna have to give me yeah, a just moment. Yeah, just a. That's a good a question. question. You guys remember that time I did thirty points of healing? No. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was yeah. amazing. <laughs> Yeah, Fafar is feeling more nimble than he's ever felt. Yeah, as you're debating that, I just want you to know I'm gonna put, I'm gonna take my move action to put myself between um, Felfer and uh, the bad dude. So you, uh, they're actually head to head right now. So you're not able to do that. I'm gonna encourage him from behind. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Um. Okay. All right. Um, I'll let you know, Falfer, in a second. I'm just checking that. Uh, cool. At this point, Rictavio, that was your turn. Um, Noggins, you're up. Dimitri, you're on deck. Okay. I, I I kind of get close because no one's currently around me, correct? Or no? Or is there enemies around me? No, you are alone here. There's some horses I'm on either side. Alone. You're off to the side. Oh, yeah. The camera's over. Okay. Um, cool. Sorry, Falfer, it is not gone. Okay. I will I will look I will go a little closer to Esmeralda and I guess scream out just to make sure that one is bad, right? Uh, Aragal. Who are you pointing to? Aragal. Yes. Okay. That's one. <laughs> um he will brandish his sickle as the fireflies dissipate since you're fully healed. And there's going to be a big ball of light that begins to form, and he throws it in the sky. Yep. Uh, and says, "I know this place doesn't have a lot of light, but this might be good." As I cast Moonbeam at third level, and that big ball of light just becomes a column, um, oh. right on top of Aragal. <laughs> okay. Nice. All right. Um, Bring forth the power of the moon. It won't do anything this very second. Um, <laughs> nice, Adam. But when he starts his turn, he needs to make a con save where he will take t 3d10 uh, radiant damage. When he starts his turn. When he starts his turn. Yes. Got it. Dimitri, you're up. Uh, and I'll, just, I'll, I'll get over that to the group as much as I can. Okay. Like, I'll just hop. Whee! Yeah. Okay. Recognizing that this is the guy to attack, I'm going to attack <laughs> uh, with the Sword of Argenvoss. <sighs> and it's a 21 to hit. That's a hit. And then da -da. it'll be for this first attack, 15 slashing. Okay. And uh, if he's still up, I'll attack again. Yeah, he's still up. Uh, okay, 24 to hit. That's a hit. And another 15 slashing. Ooh. Two-handed. Breaking in the new yeah. sword. As you bear down with uh, on him, and remember, this is a, a great sword, so you can't use your shield. Just make sure that your shield is not uh, currently right. on. on. Uh, but you just start to dig into him, and blood starts to spray at the party around that surround him currently. Um, he is looking quite, quite hurt. Um, at which point, he does a bit of a, of a kind of a side backflip parkour um, around. Uh, Rictavio disengaging and then begins to move. Can he make a con save? Oh, yeah. Sh he has to do that before he moves, right? <laughs> oh, he surely does. Yeah. Uh, that's a... Uh... 21. That's fine. It saves. Uh, but he does take... What's half of 25? 14. Oh, Sorry. Uh, what am I saying? Well, uh, 12. Tw tw yeah. 12 or 13. Which 13. one? I don't know if you round up. 13. They take 13 radiant damage immediately. Okay. Uh, it bears down on him and and i'll even say that the the blast kind of blows him up in the air and he's able to kind of twist and land 
on the other side as he kind of like crouches on one foot uh, on one knee and he starts to bolt for the tent. Is having is disengaged. He disengaging? Yeah. No one has Sentinel, do they? And he disappears into the tent. You do? Yeah. Is I, you attack even if he uh, disengages, I believe, with Sentinel. I might be wrong about that. Yeah, because Sentinel. Da -da 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 -da. Yes. Yes. Creatures yes. provoke opportunities even if they take the disengage action. Okay. There you go. <laughs> so I attack again. And a 17 to hit. Uh, that is a hit. Okay, then it's going to be uh, 13 slashing, and then I'm going to add a Divine Smite on top of it. He's not oh. he's not uh, undead or anything, right? No. He's just a guy. Yeah, just a Vistani. Okay. <laughs> so then it will be an extra 12 Radiant. Okay. All right, so as he, he gets smashed with the moonbeam, he kind of like bounces off the ground as he starts to come up. He looks behind him and he starts to kind of run for it. And he does kind of starts to do a side flip in the air. And you just take the great sword and you cleave him clearly in half as his momentum Ugh. and both of his halves fall down to the ground and skitter across <laughs> behind the <laughs> ball of fire. <clears throat> Aragal is down. I, I do have sentinels, so they can't skitter too far. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And, and, just, <laughs> and just as he does cleave them in half, Jay, I I I finish barely finish a sentence, something like, "But I was going to ask him a question." <sighs> yeah. And then, got it. Sliced. All right. Um. At this point. Uh, Sterling, the bandits disengage, kind of walking away carefully, and then start towards the horses. Do you let them go? You and Travas, do you both let them go? Did I see any of that happen? Like, you did not. Is everybody else killing Vistani? You hear that there's combat happening around the t side of the tent, but you cannot see. All right. Followers I'm, of I'm purely think, watching Sterling's actions to see what he does. Uh, I has no idea. I try to be honorable to the best of my ability. So um, I gave them the opportunity to leave, and so they're leaving. If the others kill them on the way, then I won't stop it. But I didn't see them fighting the Vistani, so I didn't know that that's what we were doing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm going to let them go. I'm going to go inside the tent, and I'm going to free that kid. Okay. Mm. Okay, so you see Vistani starting to rush towards where the horses are. Uh, Dimitri, you also, well, the, the group that just uh, battled also noticed the one with the, 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 the short, uh, the light crossbow. As soon as he sees Aragal go down, he turns and he bolts around the side of the tent. Mm. Um and he was at a distance, so unfortunately you can't do anything about that. Sterling, you enter the tent. That's five, 10, 15, 20. And as you approach, he puts his hands up like this. And he says, please, please, no. I do not, I do not want any more trouble. Please, just let me go. Let me go. I want to let you go. Do you wish to be free? Of course, please. Yes, allow me to cut your bonds. So I'll, I'll take out my sword and I'll, I'll remove the bonds from his uh, wrists. Okay, you basically slash at them against the pole. The, 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 it rips and he's able to kind of untie himself. Um, what do you do Believe next? Safe. You can stay with us if you need safety. I'll be fine. All right, and your name? That is not important. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I'm considering screaming out Dusk Elves, take your freedom, but uh, I'll, I'll hold that for now. Okay. <laughs> Um, is there anything else you want to do with your turn? You still have about 10 um, feet of movement. Uh, yeah, I'll try to find the rest of the party. Uh, I have an idea of where they are, right? You look to your left and you see that there is a scuffle that just seemed to potentially end as you watch the top torso of somebody roll across the opening through the tent this way. All right. Um, I'll I'll wave to Travas, basically saying, stay close. Okay. And, um, and I'll head towards the party. Okay, so 5'10", that's as far as you can go with the rest of your movement. 
Am I before still in, in initiative? Um. Oh yes. You, you are. Are. Wait. Yes. Sorry, I didn't. Um. Hang on. Uh, I mixed that up a little bit. One sec. You hear, uh, Travas, you hear, just before you go, you hear, you hear horses starting to gallop away into the distance. Um, yeah. So what do you um, do? Sorry. Well, I'm, I'm fine with these these turns happening in parallel. Uh, yeah. And while, while Sterling's doing that, I'd kind of like to take advantage of the very empty tent full of all their belongings and okay. see what I can find. Okay. So as you enter the tent, um, give me an investigation check. <laughs> 13. Okay. Um, so you watch Sterling now has his back to you and he's heading out the door. The Vistani is still standing in front. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to say that he held a, a dash action. So as you cut his bond, Sterling, he waits till you walk away about 10 feet. He looks at uh, Travas come through the back of the tent and he turns towards you, Sterling, and says, the name's Alexi. He turns around and then he charges out the front of the, the, the flap in the tent. Is it Lexi, like with the next? Yes, Alexi, yeah. Alexi, okay. Okay. Um, he's out the front of the tent. Okay, so as you take in the tent, uh, you know, Sterling's back just going through the big burning hole in the side of the tent. You see that there is some food storage, food items off to the left. You see that there are bed rolls and some sacks of food and grain and those sorts of things there. Um, you, you do see though that there was a table across the way and it seems to have uh, maps and maybe documents of some sort piled on top of it in the corner. That's what you see. Maps, maps and documents and a bag of gold. Uh, I'll go check out the table. Okay. <laughs> Five, 10, 15, 20. See, if, see how interesting these maps and documents are okay. to a teenage boy in Barovia. Um, what was, so what was your investigation check? Uh, it was a 13. Okay. With a 13, you discover a small pile of documents, including a map of what you recognize as Gacchus, Camp Gacchus specifically, with a variety of jotted notes on it, including information on its defenses, most powerful warriors, inventory, etc. You also find a letter bearing the Von Czarovich seal in wax that has been broken, so the letter has been read and opened, but it still stands, sits folded mm. with one of the edges up with a broken seal. I uh, I quickly scanned the list for my name. <laughs> you are not on the list. Uh, that's okay. Wise. Um, I, I, I'm going to, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to pocket that. All of it? Are there any, yeah. are, there, are there any, uh, any drawers in the table? No. It's just a wooden, simple wooden table. Oh, okay. Uh, whew. Okay. May, may I, I, am I allowed to perform one more action? I guess not, right? Like we're, we're Well, still your action was kind of investigating and looking at things. Yeah. I, I'd allow you to read the letter if you want to read the letter within that action as part of your investigation, but I'm going to say the investigation was the action. <laughs> yeah, often I decline to read the letter and then you strongly encourage me to. No, so it's, it's I'll, cool. uh, what you want. I'm just saying as part of that investigation, you could open it up and read it quickly if you wanted to. As part of your investigation action. Yeah, yeah, the, the tent's empty, I'm gonna read it. Okay. Uh, it says, uh, to my humble servants, Luvash and Aragal, long have you done my bidding, much better in fact than your forebears ever have. And for that, you will be handsomely rewarded. In the meantime, there are a few matters I need you to attend to as soon as possible. The first is the matter of the Vistani of Gakis. I do very much wish they saw things the way you do, but unfortunately it appears that they have decided to laugh in the face of our centuries old understanding. They've taken to aiding the so-called Dawnbringers, pests who bear visions of grandeur. When the time comes, I will call on you to do what is needed. I trust you will need, you will heed as necessary. Secondly, Aragal, I need you to up the numbers of potential allies you draw into Barovia. You've done an acceptable job thus far, but that just won't do any longer. I need exceptional. I need more. 
The Vistani at Gakis are growing in numbers by poaching those that pass through the mists, and that just won't do. Your master, Strahd von Zarvich. Oh my Strahd. Okay. Uh, I'm going to run run over to Sterling and okay, so hand him the letter. You've you've you, oh, your, your, your movement is full here. Um, okay. You've moved your foot, but he is only five feet away from you. So as he's in the midst of kind of rushing, about to rush through the tent. So you can then speak I'll, to him. I'll, I'll, wave, I'll wave the letter to get his attention. Sterling, Sterling. Okay. You can respond, Sterling, with words. Hey, dude, do I see the letter? You you like, turn to it? look and you just see him <laughs> shaking a letter. You can't read it at that distance. Okay, You're so about five sorry, feet from I him. can't read it. Yeah. What does it say? Come, come and read it. Come see. Okay. That's it right, for so. six seconds. Falfa, you're up. Yep. Esmeralda, you're on deck. Okay. <clears throat> I will... Uh, can I run over to Aragal's body? Yep. Uh, two pieces of the body? Yep. Um, I'd like to search both pieces for any evidence of any information about what they were doing there. Okay. Um, give me an investigation check. Okay. That is... A... Oh, this is a good stat. Um, it's an 18 for me. Okay. All you find on him is a short sword, a light crossbow, um, and a coin pouch. Oh, that connotes coins. Any coins in those pouches? In yes. that pouch? You shake it, and if you want to open it up and count, you can, yep. but you shake and you realize there's, there's coins in it. Okay, I'll pocket the pouch for now and tell okay. everyone about it after. Okay. All right. Esmeralda, you're up. Octavio, you're on deck. Do I see that other Vistani running out of the tent? Um, yes, at the back you hear footsteps behind you, and you see the, um, the 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 boy that had been whipped running with his back towards you, away from from the, the tent on this side. Oh, he's running, a boy running Ooh. this way. He's the teenage. He's the teenaged boy that was tied to the to the post. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna use evil eye and, and cast hold person on him. Okay. Oh. Okay. Does he have for a save leverage. for that? Uh, probably. Uh, 14. I don't have the spell in front of me. I just have that I can do it. Uh, so I have to look it up. That's a wisdom saving throw? Yes. Uh, wisdom, I believe. yes. Wisdom. Um, that's 12. So he fails. Yeah. I'm going to um, hold him hostage. Okay, as he's running, you see him go rigid and he stops in his tracks. And I'll move towards him. Okay, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So you're five feet from him with that with that movement. And I'll uh, just hold up my, my rapier and say, do as I say and you won't get hurt. And he kind of like looks over his shoulder at you through, uh, and I'm assuming whole person they're uh, paralyzed. Mm -hmm. Okay, or restrained. Yeah, uh, I have to look up the specifics. Um, do you want me to look that up while you Par move I'll on to somebody okay. else? Paralyzed. Okay. I see it. Paralyzed. Paralyzed. Okay. Paralyzed. Yeah. So out of the corner of his eyes, you look <laughs> at him. You can't tell. Can't move. Um, but he's not going anywhere. He's listening. And that's that will end my turn. Okay. I don't even think a paralyzed person can talk. I'm assuming. Uh, oh, he don't have to respond. He just has to listen. So I'm assuming not. Yeah. Sorry. I said, oh, he doesn't have to respond. He just <laughs> has to listen. Fair enough. All right. Um, okay. <laughs> Rectavio, you're up. Noggins, you're on deck. I don't know Noggins. Is Noggins right in front of me? Uh, he's behind you a ways. Um, he's like right here, 5, 10, 15, 20 feet from you. Behind you. So once you start to kind of look around and take in your surroundings, you see that he's standing behind you, heading in the direction of, of, of the party that you're with. I, I, don't, I, I, I don't have any sort of indication that he's good or bad. Right? Uh, I mean, insight check. 
He's not talking to any. I mean, I haven't seen him addressing anyone. I don't know he cast the fireflies. I have addressed Esmeralda. I cast Moon Moonbeam behind you, but yeah, do as you please. But, I, but I, do I know that you cast Moonbeam? Oh, you did say the thing about the thing. Okay, good. I'm gonna. T- I, I rolled an 18. Okay. Um, yeah. So, and you saw he was running with Esmeralda towards right, the party. She turned point. around and she ran Perfect. back. Perfect. Okay, so good. yeah. Um. So, so uh, the guys that took the the dude that took off on the horses. Do I have any sense of that? Can I hear in this moment? Perception check. Okay, great. Thank you for giving me the check. Um, you're a benevolent uh, leader. Um, you know, I'm gonna take a luck bonus. It didn't really go well, but I really want to kill Morphostone. He's only here for one reason. Oh, I'm cracked. Okay, very nice. That's a remember with the luck, but that's crazy. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, you absolutely hear exactly two horses galloping off on the other side of the tent, away from the tent. So I will make my way towards that where I hear the thing and see if I can get off a, a spell. Okay, do you want to get through go through the tent or do you want to go around the tent? Um, with a crit, I want to go the fastest way possible, Jay. Okay. I want to go with, with the most economical <laughs> and, clo- and, the, and the most direct. Okay, so you're going to go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 5, 10, f- I'm assuming you're dashing? Yeah, uh, well, that's a double move, right? Yeah. I want a single move because I want to take a shot at the end of it. You, so you wouldn't have one. If you go through the tent, it puts you, it puts you kind of center tent. The other movement would put you at the edge of the tent. Well, can I get edge of the tent and see if I get a line of sight? Yeah. So with the rest of your movement, with your dash, you get to the tent, you look through a, an opening that had been cut through. Uh, right on the other side of that opening is a Vistani tying up a horse here. Unfortunately, you don't have anything left uh, action-wise. Uh, but there is a... Well, this way. There is a Vistani here untying this horse you're here looking out at him uh, and there's another vistani here running past but there's just chaos in the distance you see that there are two horses about How at this point 10 20 30 this? about 30 or 40 feet away i cast oh I you do can't move. yeah you're out i hate you <laughs> yeah i love you too <laughs> noggins you're up <laughs> to meet you you're okay up. so aragal's dead fall first next to that body Dimitri and Esmeralda are close. I'm going to go over to where Esmeralda is and Dimitri is. Um... So yeah, as you turn, you watch her reach out and that whipped uh, teenager stops rigid as she holds him. And you see she walks to, she walks calmly towards him and says something that you don't hear. Okay. How far away is she from, from where I was? How far away is she? Yeah, so she's... 5, 10, 15, 20 feet. All right, yeah. I'll go over to her regardless, and I'll just say, I'm sorry. We came here to figure out stuff. Mm, no. Um, And now we're killing things, and you've obviously done something magical to that one. What is our plan right now? And who is that who keeps yelling? He's really loud. <laughs> well, he's a friend of ours. Uh, and it seems as... I don't know. I don't have a plan. It seems that we're under attack. I don't we want to kill this attack. kid. He attacked. Well, they're attacking us. There must be a reason if they're attacking him then they're not our allies. Six seconds, Dimitri, you're up. Okay, I'm gonna turn to uh, Falfer, who's right next to me and say, I think we should follow Rictavio. He seems to know what's going on. And uh, I'll follow Rictavio and I'll dash to keep up with him. That puts you about just like 10 feet behind him. Um, and your guardian, I'm assuming, follows you through the tent, Rictavio. OK, 
Okay. All right. Um, these horses move another. Really quickly. Yep. Uh, um, you didn't really things. get an action. Do you want to take a quick action? No. Okay. Um, but what I will do um, is clarify something really quickly. Poly the, the tiger is unpolymorphed. Um, just so that's known. Okay. Uh, and for my bonus action, I would have just moved my moonbeam next to me. Okay. But I'm still holding it. Got it. Because I don't know what's happening, and I don't like what's happening right now. Got it. Okay. So you watch uh, Rectavio as those horses, like, full gallop, tear into, tear out, down the hill. Okay. Um, this one is going to do 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Starts untying a horse with its action. Um, and this one, right in front of you, Rictavio, um, you kind of poke through and you startle him. He takes a disengage action um, and moves. To there. And um, they're bugging out. Boo! And the one that Esmeralda has cannot do anything at this point. Um, okay. Uh, Travas, you're up. Sterling, you're on deck. I'm going to uh, run over to the hole. Okay. Uh, very nervous, by the way, as Rictavio, the murderer, runs by me. Yeah, and then I kind of blend in with these people for people that don't know me. So yeah, I'm so gonna... we're sorry. Rictavio runs by, and then Dimitri also runs by. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna step out of Sterling, hand him the letter. Uh, where's Esmeralda at this point? Can I look around and, and see if I can see her? Um, I'm gonna say that uh, you heard her say something out here. You heard her voice just outside the tent, but you can't see her at this point. Okay. Uh, I hand him the letter, and I'm gonna run out towards where I heard her voice. 5, 10, 15, 20, uh, 25, 30. Well, at 25, you look out and you see Noggins and her standing there and she's currently ha arm outstretched and the boy who had been lashed is rigid out in front of her about five feet from there. Okay. Oh, okay, cool. So I'll, I'll move the next five feet towards her. I'll move the rest of the distance. Okay. And huffing with my running, I'll say, don't worry, I saved the girl. I let her go. <laughs> yeah, but everybody else is attacking us now. But the one you were protecting, I, I let her go. Isn't that what you wanted? I don't even know what to do with the little girl right now. I don't know what to do with him. Well, we killed some of them. <laughs> I... <laughs> That's all I got. I'm okay. going to hold my action. Yeah. Uh, I can't stabby pokey anyone. Uh, I, I, if Esmeralda decides she's going to unleash on this guy, if she, if anybody is, is aggressive towards somebody that is not my friend, I'd like to attack them as well. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's the name of the game today. Okay, good. <laughs> I like it. All right. Sterling, you're up. Fall for your on deck. All right. So skimming the note, I'm going to shout out to everybody. Uh, Strahd's Vistani, we're going to attack Gakis! And, uh, so, <laughs> I, uh, would I have an idea if the guys that were running to the horses would have had enough time to escape by now? Because they had to run to the horses, mount the horses, and then leave, right? You imagine, well, you hear a, a ton of galloping outside the tent. And, and so you know at least, well, Give me an insight check, I'd say, to All see right. if you can kind of tell how you know how many have probably left and how many haven't. Eighteen. Um, yeah, with an eighteen, you've heard probably as many that got away on horses and off. Okay, so they probably got away. But you, but you, well, you hear them still galloping. Some in the in the far distance, some not too far distant. 
Okay, I'm gonna run out of the tent. Okay. And then I will shout, um, Dusk Elves, take your freedom! And I'll uh, see if the guys are within range for me to shoot them. Okay, so you're gonna run out towards where the horses are running, right? Yeah. Five. Uh, I don't really want to hurt the horses, 15, but 20, I'll try to 25. hit the guys. So 30 puts you just behind Rictavio. Okay. Uh, but you can see through. Oh no, I have a movement of 40. So 40 puts you just outside the tent. Okay. Um, you see that there is one Vistani on a horse. That's 10, uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 feet from you. All and right. then there's another one that is 120 feet from you. Okay, I'm using my bonus action to start uh, Uvar. Uh, and I'm gonna give myself advantage uh, to shoot the guy that's the furthest away. Furthest? Uh, well, with, within firing firing range, but yeah, that, that I would be able to What's hit. What's the top range of your crossbow? Um, oh, wait, you know what? Hang on a second. I, I, I forgot to consider the, um, the, the, the hill. Um, that's 20. You have uh, the high ground. 30, 20. Yeah, you're good. Okay. They're, they're far enough that they're not hidden by the, the peak of the hill, I just wanted, or the, the slope of the hill. All right, all right, good call. Um, all right. Just to... It is uh, 320. It's 8320. Yeah, so you're good. Okay. So uh with disadvantage. Okay. So then so that up, So up to 80 it's normal. So and then with, past 320 you can't shoot. With the Uvar advantage, it would just be regular. Correct. So I'll take two shots, first one regular, second one disadvantage. Okay. This is fun. Have I told you guys how much I love playing with this game with you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's a 15 to hit. And uh, that is a hit. And an eight to hit. That's uh, not a hit. 15 hits. Okay. The 15 does four points of damage. Okay. And you watch as the bolt hits him in the arm and he keeps, he kind of slumps over a little bit, but keeps going. Okay. And then I wonder <laughs> if I should have shot the horse after all. But I love horses, so no. Shoot the hostage. Um, but that's, that's it. Yeah, shoot the hostage. Speed. <laughs> okay. Falfer, you're up as Merle, you're on deck. Okay. I put my hand on the chest of Aragal, who, uh, and, I, and I'll just, I'll, I'll under my breath say, I hope you lay in the pit where he left you. And, uh, and I'll stand up and head towards where Dimitri, who yelled out to me to go towards uh, Rictavio. I'll head in that direction if I could. J. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 puts you just inside the hole in the tent. Okay. And you see Dimitri, the Guardian, and Rictavio at the edge of the tent. And do I see do I see Sterling or do I get any you sense? See the back of I'm Sterling. trying to get my I see the back of Sterling. And you see that he do has his crossbow out and he's pointing it away through, from through the tent by chance, and assuming I was awake at the time, did I hear any of the reading of that letter? No. Okay. All you heard okay. was Sterling yell. They wanted to kill. What did you yell again? Something about right. They were. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Give I'll, me an I'll, idea. Yeah. I'll yell out to everyone and basically say, "That man we killed outside. He's the one who brought me here." You all hear this? He brought you to 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 Barovia. I'm to here because of him. Mm. Pervas realizes they brought you here because they thought you would fight for Strahd. Yes, uh, clearly that is not the case. Who, who, who is? Who are we fighting here? Uh, who is? Who is our enemy here? You mean, good man, the Vistani? Do you just said it yourself? They no, I, I, you I, this god for shaking land. No, who I are know that, you. But... No, but why, why are, are you, you here? I start to cast. <laughs> who are you? You see his sickle just draw with energy. There's no <laughs> time. We are still in initiative. We must stop them. All of them must pay the ultimate price. Okay. Falfer, 
Um, <clears throat> if you want to keep talking, that's fine. You can take a quick action if you want. Yes. So I'm going to... Um, no, I'm not going to take any... Can I hold my action in case an attack happens against one of my sure. co... And you want to co- shoot whoever attacks your... Yeah, that's right. I'm going to just use... Uh, just hold a crossbow attack. Okay. All right. Esmeralda, you're up. Rictavio, you're on deck. I just shout to everybody, what do we do with the boy? Keep him. We must ask him questions. Can we, like, just not for five minutes? (laughs) I mean, we're in initiative. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) That is not an option. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I'm going to take him. I'm going to take him back into the tent to tie him up. Okay, so you have him held, you pick him up, and you start carrying him back in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Jay, if I, oh, sorry, I know it's not my turn, but can I ask a, qu- a technical question again? Sure. As- assuming that Esmeralda is uh, disengaging to take that action, can I also disengage and help her out? Uh, no, because you already held your action. To do- you ready your action to do something else. Okay. Um, but That's she's fair. not disengaging. There's nobody around her, so she's just grabbed the boy, and okay. she's pulling him in because she cast the whole person on him. So he's oh, currently paralyzed. Okay. Cool. Uh, Esmeralda, do you want to take a dash so that you can get back to the pole? Because you're you're only halfway because you're carrying a person. Yes. Okay. You are back at the pole. All right. <laughs> I love that. Uh, Rictavio, you're up. Noggins, you're on deck. I was really excited. Sorry. I take okay. my action. I move through the hole in front of me. Yep. And I go out and I cast Firewall. It's 120 foot range. Can I put it in front of the two lead horsemen? You can absolutely, you think they're just on the edge. You know if this doesn't succeed, that they will absolutely be past your range. Yeah, well, that's what, let's go for it. And I'll scream as I'm doing it. Stop talking! Action is, in, is now is the time for action! Okay. Wait, indeed. Is there you a rule? Waited ro- long enough. Is there a role associated? Um, sorry, uh, I was inspiring action. Um, there is a, it's, so my other concentration spell drops, which is your ball, my, my fire, yep. uh, my sphere of fire. Yep. Um, and it's a deck save of 16. Wall of fire! Okay. Wall of fire! Wall of fire! <laughs> Are you doing a fireball or a wall of fire? Wall of fire! <laughs> a wall. I, I'm hearing wall. wall. I don't know what you guys are hearing, but yeah, fire. wall. It's 16? That decks of 16. They're going to run right into it, Jay. Okay. Ride horses. If they fail. Okay, so they're riding horses. You cast it. <laughs> they, they, what happens if they roll a, a, if they succeed on their dexterity save? Do they get through they it? They can't succeed, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> you just said they have a deck save. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> they all, they, wait, uh, honest question. Honest. The horses yes. have to succeed. They're full sprint. Yeah. And a fireball, a firewall appears right in front of them. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, what did you say? <laughs> no, I get it. I just rolled three natural ones. <laughs> so this happens. What? Uh, so how big is this fi- a wall of fire? Firewall? 120 feet, Jay. No, wide. Oh, sorry. 20 feet high, uh, 20 feet diameter, 20 feet high, one foot thick. It's opaque. <laughs> Uh, it's opaque, Jay. It, it's, is it, a, it creates a circle of fire? No, it's a wall. A it's a wall. wall. So how lo- sorry, how long is the wall? It's 20 feet high, but how wide is it? Um, It is 20 feet in diameter. So it's, it's 20 feet high, 60 feet long. It is 60 feet long. 60 feet, okay. Because <laughs> diameter doesn't... We, we got there. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> all right, all right. Listen. God only gives so many <laughs> gifts, and words like diameter <laughs> are challenging <laughs> to some of us. Okay, so it's 60 feet. 20, 40, 60. That is 60. Okay, so uh, there are 
two horses that are at that 120 foot. One is Luvash with his daughter in his arms. As he's bearing down, the, the horse beside him with the Vistani smashes dead into the wall. How much damage do they take? Let me roll. D&D Beyond, please push the button. 96. Oh, so many ones. 26. <laughs> they take 26. Okay. So it just basically barrels into the wall and comes up the other side ash. Both horse and rider. Oh. Oh. Um, oh. Luvash. That's, right. That's what with... happens. I want to be clear. That's what happens when you're in cahoots with Straw Bonzerovich. <sighs> Luvash with his daughter sees the wall happen and manages to roll off the top of the horse. The horse smashes the wall. The horse goes down. Luvash rolls onto the ground and takes half damage. Yeah. Still? Okay. Yes. So he would take uh, 13? Yes. What about the kid that we just saved twice? <laughs> we saved him from himself and we saved him from us. That's right. No, fair. the other kid that we to saved fair. twice. <laughs> Arabelle. He does not, I do not know anything about a child. That's true. You uh, wouldn't know. So I yes, you see, would. <laughs> no, all I see is them taking off. Yeah. How would I know? I mean, they came out the back. I sent my tiger in. We were in the tent and they were in the corner. The watch was with her, protecting I her. Outside the tent. I was outside the tent. Oh, okay. Um, and as Sorry, he rolls enough. off, you see him roll. And as he stops his roll, you see another figure roll further and motionless. Wait. Wait, what? So, a third body or well, just the two? The child. Yeah, only Sterling and, and, and um, Rotavio see this. But you see Luvash fall off and roll slightly. His arms open up and another figure rolls a little ways and stops. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know it's a child. Noggins, you're up. Child. Dimitri, you're on deck. It's very small. Yeah. That could be a bag of rice. <laughs> Uh, which they do hold dear in Barovia, so mm. for yeah. sure. Yeah, they do. You know why? Because no. Strahd is a monster. And there it goes with a monster! Your turn is over! Not Shut you're up. up. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, uh, yeah, bro. Uh, Noggins... Mm. So the dust cell, what, what, what are the dust cells f f running free? What are they doing? Um, give me a perception check on that. Okay. You're at the front of the tent, just outside the front of the tent. That is... Mathiana. No. LOL, no. That's not Mathiana. I read that very wrong. That is uh, a one. Okay. Plus eight, but a one. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... All you, you look down um, at kind of the hovels that exist that circle in the front, around the front of the, of the hill. And you, all you see is the guards standing outside each one of the hovels, kind of watching up the hill of what's going on. Does it seem like there's a lot of, um, um, does it seem like there's a lot of, Chaos still ha okay. Like I would say, just like people yelling and stuff. But like, does it seem like most of the people are gone at this point? Yes. Yeah. It is. It is actually quite quiet around the tent, except for the firing of arrows and casting and verbal components, uh, or, or, or 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 sorry, somatic, or or sorry, verbal castings. But other than that, all you hear is the distant sound of the horses galloping on the grass down the hill. Okay. Then I'll just. I will snuff. I will snuff my. No, I won't. I'll, I'll keep it to just a second. But I was just look at um, Esmeralda one last time. So she is. She has passed through the tent. Oh, sorry. I'll go into the yeah. tent. Sorry. Yeah. I will so go into the tent. Um, 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay. That's great. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. And okay. she's tying the. And she's, they're tying the kid back up. She has right? him against the post, but she hasn't tied him yet. Cool. 
Um, we need to have a discussion. Everyone needs to have a discussion. Um, okay, yes, but not now. Obviously not right now, but we're going to talk. Did yes! You? No, I have a lot of questions! The a lot m- of questions! The moonbeam goes out, okay. and I'm done. Fizzles. Dimitri, you're up. Okay. Um, looking around, how much commotion is still happening? Um, so playing. in front, you see that, that Falfer just through the hole has... Uh, sorry, Sterling has just shot a, a, a bolt. You see that Rectavio casts something in the distance, uh, and you hear, heard a bit of a crash and neighing of horses and so on. Um, and you see Esmeralda just beside you, tying the boy back up, or about to. She brought the boy back in and has put him up against the post. Okay. Um, and Falfer's just inside I'll, the tent on the backside. I'll go to the exit of the tent where Sterling and Rictavio are. Yeah. And uh, how far out are the creatures that fell? Yeah, so there's two horses. Uh, there's two horses that are about 60 feet from the tent. And then there's a wall of fire about another 60 feet with just the hint of a figure on the floor, on the ground, just out from the fire. Okay. Um, then I am... Uh, can I? Is it distinguishable, the two horses that are 60 feet from the tent? Um, is it? Can you tell, like, uh, are they... Like very similar, I guess it's. They're Vistani, for sure. Okay, I'll I'll pick one. I'll pick the one on the left. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna cast hold person on that one. Okay. While it's trying to drive its horse, ride its horse. <laughs> yep. Okay. Including not a cowboy. And that's a uh, wisdom save. Yep, wisdom fourteen. They fail. Uh, okay, are you it's... casting on the horse or the person? The person, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, it's uh, paralyzed, and uh, whatever movement I have left, I'm going to go to where it is. Okay. So, so, five, uh, so you've moved 15, so 5, 10, 15. There, so there. Puts you just out in front. You can't really see from there. Um, the other horse is, as I said... So as soon as you cast it, you see the person go rigid on the horse. Um, And because their hands were on the reins, they remain on the reins as the person kind of falls off, held, and the horse is, looks like they're dragging the held person who is being like basically pulled along beside the horse currently until their turn. Um, But you see the horse kind of stop and turn around and like is like tugging at the reins to try to get the person, the the Vistani, who is still holding the reins away from from the horse. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Um, You, Dimitri, Sterling, and Rectavio watch as Luvash gets up on all fours and you hear a, a, a cry of, of anger and anguish as you watch him crawl over to the still body of Arabelle who is on the ground. Um, and you can hear him just screaming as he's crouched over her on all fours. Um, the other horse continues on 120 feet and out of range through the mist, there was another one. Uh, the one still continues to pull and is kind of almost dragging slowly this Vistani in a direction, but not very, very far. Probably some 15 feet is all they move that you have currently held them. Um, the other hor- horses are dead while the fire's there. Um, at this point, I'm going to say we are out of initiative as there are no current threats at all. What do you all do? So did some of them escape? or um, One seems like it escaped. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run over to the Luvash. 
Okay. It takes you a little bit to get there, um, but again, out of initiative, it's fine. You end up getting close, and as you get, he doesn't even look at you as he's currently on all fours, crouched over Arabelle, who is motionless. Okay, I, uh, I see what's happened. I drop to my knees next to him, and I say, Serves you right, you son of a bitch. Okay. Yeah. He 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 can tell he stiffens at that at that sound, but basically like picks her up and cradles her in his arms. We As all make our way there, right? Yeah. We're all on our way. Sure. Can, yeah. Yeah. And I run out of that tent to go find everybody all else. All of us are right there. Yeah. So all of you eventually, Sterling's the first to get there. Rectavio uh, and Dimitri right, kind of just behind. Uh, and the rest of you make your way over. What do you do with the teenager? I, I'd actually, I'd actually Please. like to, to go through the Vardos while they're over there. Okay. Esmeralda? I mean, if he's tied up, I just leave him there. I'll come okay, back. Okay, so you tie him up. Um, he's yeah. still held, correct? And he stays held? Uh, for It lasts a minute. So okay, it's, okay. It's gonna... so yeah. So you tie him up. By the time you're done tying him up, he kind of starts to, to you can tell that he starts to come too, but you've already left the tent and are heading in that direction. Yeah. Um, on the way, uh, on the way to the wall of fire, I'm just gonna pick up the the guy I paralyzed and detach the reins from his hands, okay. and I'll carry him the rest of the way to the wall of fire just to keep him close. Okay. But I'll be there with him. <laughs> I thought okay. you were gonna throw him in there. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, Whoa, buddy! <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time this season. No. Um, I know. All right. Uh. Travas, can you give me a investigation check, please? Sure. Now, there are many Vardos. Yeah, I was thinking I'd wear uh, red, green, purple. <laughs> red, <laughs> From what green. I can see. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so, yeah, so there's... Um... Uh, I got a 24. You know, I just want to make sure there's nothing else uh, they're going to use against Gakus. And maybe look for valuables while I'm at it. Okay, so there's 12 um, Vardos. Oh. Um, surrounding. Only three there just to show you kind of where it is, but there's 12 all the way around. Um, oh, it take quite a while. Um, yeah, so you can decide where you want to start. Yeah, out the I think front. between each Vardo, and... I'm, gonna, I'm just going to try to see where the party is to make sure they're not leaving without me. Okay, so where do you want to start? If I hear them coming back, I'll... Uh, I don't know. There's 12. We'll start at 1 o'clock. Okay. 1 o'clock? <laughs> okay. I see you shaking your head at me, Nora. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still salty said, about... Rogue's got a loot. Okay. About uh, what? About, oh, your I'm Vardo. I'm still salty about my Vardo, even though mm. it's fully restored and tricked out now. Mm. So you, you step into this Vardo, um, and you open it as they didn't lock it on their way through, and it looks like a standard... Vistani Vardo. Um, there are some belongings in there, but most of them are mundane. Um, cutlery, uh, equipment, those sorts of things. I can kind of give you a bit of a list of what's in there, but it's nothing of, of, of immediate value that you see. With your investigation check, though, you're able to find a little pouch of coin under kind of the pillow. Um, and you hear the jingle of coins inside. Yeah. Is there a is there a for sake of brevity version for this? Because I feel bad for making the whole party sit through twelve Vardo searches. <laughs> um, um, well, I, well also, do you start also... do, you, do you start at one o'clock and then go clockwise? Is oh yeah, your, is that your intent? I, I might even go anti clockwise. Anti clockwise. Just, I mean, to, just to Barovia it up a little. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> let's say in the time that they take to walk down there and do what they do, you're able to yeah. go from basically twelve o'clock to three o'clock. At 3 o'clock, um, you can tell that this Vardo is a bit more rich than the others are. Um, yes. And uh, it's definitely nicer than the others. Drapes of gold and silk hang in the windows, and the wheels have gold sun-shaped hubcaps. An iron what? chimney pipe protrudes from the roof. As you go inside, um, it's a total mess. Uh, empty wineskins, dirty clo clothes, and mangy furs are strewn about, strewn about. A small hammock strung across the width of the wagon under the driver's seat serves as uh, a bed for a small being of some sort. You imagine a child. A burlap doll with button eyes lies in the hammock. 
um, but otherwise no other possessions for the child. You see a small iron stove in the middle of the wagon would keep the interior warm. Um, the only thing of value that you can see in this Vardo specifically is the Vardo itself, just because it's a, it's a more expensive Vardo. And you imagine okay. the actual hubcaps um, are, are gold, and they're probably worth something. Oh, heck yeah. Them on I'm cement. Gonna, yeah, I gotta leave them the Vardo on blocks. On blocks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm gonna take her burlap doll. Okay. Uh, Savage. And the gold hubcap, how am I gonna get those off? How am I... I, I, you imagine it's you could, easier to just. You imagine you could pry it's them off. Better to just. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll. I'll just. Okay. I'll all right. Sit there in the back to the, the party. Off the You're all uh, surrounding Luvash as he is distraught, holding his daughter. As you all join, is there anything that the three of you want to do before the rest of them catch up? You have a quick moment. I was thinking of tying him up, but at the same time, I feel like he deserves a moment to mourn. So have we confirmed for sure his daughter yeah, is I'm dead? Like, She's just that? motionless in his arms. Jay, who's there? Uh, Rictavio, Dimitri, and Sterling currently. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll put, like, I'll stay, I'll go up to him and like, move out of the way. And I'll, um, and now it's not like Sterling. Move out of the way. Uh, I'll lay hands, I'll, I'll check to see if she's alive. Um, okay, give me a medicine check. Uh, plus eight. Fourteen. Okay. With a fourteen, um, you... Luvash kind of, like, looks up at you. Um, you said move out of the way. I'm assuming to him? Yeah. Um, give me a, either a persuasion or intimidation check based on. Oh, yeah, I mean, um, it's more of a, uh, it's persuasion. I'm not trying to intimidate him at this moment. I roll a 13. Okay. If that doesn't do it, I'll use a luck point to re-roll. Okay. Uh, a 13's enough as he kind of looks up at you okay. and he kind of sits back holding her still. Uh, but kind of like sits with his hand sort of basically given up at this point and uh, just distraught. Okay, so is she alive? Medicine check. I just gave... Uh, Sorry. You want me to do it again? No, what was, was the six? medicine check? It was a 14. 14. Um, with a 14, you can tell um, that she is just... You, you hear a very faint, faint heartbeat. Oh, great. Okay, so I'm going to say to him in this moment, but you can. She's got. She's scuffed up, and she's got like a a hem, uh, like a hematoma Laceration. building on her head. Okay. I want, really quickly, I want it known if because I know we were gonna let the three of them have a moment, but if Rictavio has gotten there, I'm faster than Rictavio. I'm definitely close as well. Just, just so it's known. Yeah, you were just you were five, twenty feet behind him. When yeah, I, 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 do you have 30 or 35? I have 35 feet of movement, so I'm saying, like, I probably catch up yeah. at, at, in, in, in the same time, is what I'm saying. Sure. I'm just, I'm just close. Yeah. Okay. So I'll say... And I'm well, making my way over. Yeah. I'll, I'm going to bind I'll Lubash. I'll say, um, uh, this child, the side effect of your treachery. Just remember this, and I'll lay on hands. Okay. All right. And as you do, the usual blue glow wraps around her, turning to a putrid nastiness as she <gasps> comes back. 14. She takes 14 points. Which is way above her max. As you watch the hematoma begin to go down, all of her wounds kind of start to close up. And he <gasps> and grabs her. And you hear him saying, my girl, my girl, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. And she wraps, carefully wraps her arms around his neck. Um, the rest of you arrive. She's, she's okay, the girl. Her life has been saved. 
Then Luvash. Uh, perhaps you can tell me a little bit about your friend that we dispatched with. Uh, I have some questions about him. No, nothing. Luvash. Sorry. Silence. I had thought you. Seriously. I thought you were speaking to to Fatavio. What was the no. question? Luvash. Um, I have some questions. I was going to ask uh, Ara, Ara, Aragorn, uh, Arabel, uh, Ara, Aragorn, Ara, Aragorn. <laughs> um, perhaps you could answer some for me. He looks up at you, just wide-eyed, blank stare. Clearly still inebriated, but sobered by the moment. Listen, I do not know what was going on here, but certainly uh, that man, he is the reason for me being here in Barovia. And, and do you have any knowledge of what I'm talking about? But of course, he brings many through the mist. He is my brother, but I am assuming you killed him too, with the rest of my brothers. He, he, he attacked me. I was, uh, and it wasn't me, it was that large man over there with the long sword. But I will say this, yes, we dispatched of him, and we will do the same with you if you do not give us the answers we need. And then he looks, he, you notice him notice Travas. He looks over at Travas, a little confused, and then looks back at the rest of the party. Do what you want with me, but just don't hurt her. Please. We are not in the business of killing children. Under my breath, I'll say, only uh, inebriated boat people. <laughs> says the man who just threatened this man's life. I'm just, uh, Sterling, I was just, uh, is a joke. Let's move on. He's Tell like, us about your plans for Gacchus. These are not my plans. These are the plans of Strahd. That not enough to dispatch him to hell. Let his soul rain down again within the mists. Send him back. Noggin Let speaks. him be reborn in the Nothingness. You all are aligned with Strahd, I'm assuming, because he could kill you with a blink of an eye. But you were not planning on... I don't even know what a Gacchus is, but you were not planning to attack anyone that was from Strahd? Um, I have the letter. So at this point, I think it would be prudent to read it aloud to the party so that they know what it contains. You all hear uh, it. Yeah. So as you can see, the Strahd's own mark, his own wax seal broken. Yes. They were going to attack Gacchus. Sterling, out of respect, I need you not to answer for him. Fine. Were you all planning on destroying this Gacchus, or was that just an order? Were you going to follow through? We do what the Dark Lord asks to survive. In turn, he lets us live. I do not understand why you would save my girl just to kill everyone she loves. Savid told me that you saved her, that you helped save her. Why? Why just to kill everyone? And you all realize at this point that Savid is nowhere to be seen and wasn't after the, everything started. But as you look back, you do watch as all of the guards that were at the camp are kind of standing at the peak of the hill 
or sorry, kind of at the edge of their houses on one side, looking out with Casimir at what's transpiring. Those are the Dusk Elves, correct? Correct. We did not come here to kill your people. We came here to return the girl. We intended to speak with you. Then the cap we did. came under attack. You're muted, Matt. Oh, no, I'm not. Now you are. Now you're good. <clears throat> um, I'll say that was not my intent. My intention is to destroy every single one of these Vistani. The reason we save your daughter is there's still hope for her. She is not yet a monster. You, sir, are nothing short of a monster and should be dispatched as such. Now, who will stand in my way? This man needs to pay the ultimate price. Nagan stands in front of you. You, I do not know. What I'm hearing is that these people, just like us, were brought here. And now they had to make a choice that we didn't have to make. That is they had to make a choice to survive. I am not saying they are right. I am saying they had to make a choice. Nogans, that is not the full- You don't know my name. You don't get to speak it. You, do, you, sir, do not know the full history. For centuries, the Vistani travel to and fro in the mist, bringing back innocence, bringing back people to serve as, as, as far up a Strahd in his joy. And you Great think they boy. would do this? You think they would do this if Strahd was gone? You think they would continue this pain of this cycle not, upon if, cycles upon cycles? Is that what I'm did, hearing? If they did not do it. Ask him again. If all this has happened and he still sides with Strahd, then I agree he does not, should not keep his life. Yes, ask him one more time. And I'm I, casting Zone of Truth. Okay. Nice! Very good. Mm. And how big nice! is the radius on that again? His face! Uh, 15 foot sphere. Okay. 15 foot radius sphere. Okay. As you cast it, um, he looks up at you and he says, um, at all of you, he says, if you let me go, he would not know that I have not died. And I will just live my life with my daughter in the Brovin mists. I swear it. You will never see me again. That would not be safe for her. Would you consider joining Gakis for safety and protection? <coughs> never. And you are hopeless in my eyes. Yes, we implore you to reconsider. It's one thing to let you go if you promise to be good, but Unfortunately, in Barovia, promises are very cheap. Why would I trade dying today to go die with them? They will all die, not by my hand, but he will you, make it you, so. But seriously, you just told us that you were doing it so that you could survive longer. <laughs> we're giving you a choice. You either die now or you survive longer by joining us. So you select it. You choose. You either die now at our hand, or you survive longer and you join our side. You decide. That's not a choice. That's a... That's an ultimatum. Uh, okay, fine. I will name it what it is, an ultimatum. You either, my friend, have to join our side, or we dispatch with you here. He doesn't want to join our side because he hates you. He hates me. He brought thousands of men and women into this realm to die. Well, Why are you giving him a choice? He is a monster. He would risk his daughter in the mists. What? He would risk his daughter in the mists. 
with the undead and the werewolves and the beasts. Listen, he sir. Was a monster. I was he a was. child once. This is no place for children. She needs to be someplace safe where she won't see this anymore. If survival is truly your goal, if you wish for your daughter to survive, then Gakis really is your only choice. Gakis is a big target for him. You are a big target for him. My daughter is not safe with you. He is not safe with, she is not safe with them. My safest is to take my Vardo, leave the mists and never come back because I can still do so. So let me go and I will take my daughter and I will never come back. Will you free the Dusk Elves that have been kept? They were never under my imprisonment. They are allowed to leave because we were keeping a eye on them. But they weren't our prisoners. They were part of our community. They're not what in is chains. Early? They can come and go as they please. But the only reason they live is because of us. So you call me monster. You call me murder. You call me all these things. I have done what I have to do to survive. Just like you. You have killed. I... No. You have killed to be able to leave you... this place. You have taken many lives just by having them enter these mists. And what, what happened? kept you coming back? What happened to Arabelle's captor? What happened to Bluto? Tell me. The drunk from Valaki. He should have died. But you decide that he should. Does that make you monster? Does that make you murderer? Because you don't know. I would have got him myself, but does that mean you should have too? Yeah, at that point, I just turn away, walk towards the back towards the tent. I'm like, I, I, I don't know what to do. This is this world. This place is it's it's too dark. It's wh what will we do? A very good question. What is your relationship to the boy? Which boy? Tied up in the tent. That boy. Oh, Alexei. I was punishing him. He was in charge of watching Adabel. It was his fault she left. It was his fault she was taken. So, it's a custom that he should receive punishment. And he My accepted friends. it. Ask him. Friends, come close, come close. And you I want, to... I'm sorry, you want to, so it's okay to punish the boy, but you're questioning us for murdering the man who kidnapped you. We are going him? around in circles right now. I don't blame you for killing him. I would kill him myself. But punishment is very different than taking someone's life. We are listening. We are debating with a monster. We, would, you, would you debate with Strahd? If Strahd was here, would you wonder what his motivation was? He's would not wonder, Strahd. He is a servant of Strahd. He has been. The people, these Vistani, there are good Vistani that choose not to do what he does. Vistani, not all Vistani are wicked and evil. Not all Vistani trade on the blood of others. These Vistani do. These make a choice to serve evil. What are we doing? I, they I, made I, a choice so they wouldn't die, and I probably would have done the same if I didn't have another choice. My choice was actually taken away from me. Fun fact, I was polymorphed into a goat. Listen to me. There are Vistani in this land right now that choose not to do what he's doing. There no, are I'm happy for them. Yes! I'm happy for them all i'm saying right now all i am saying is that we don't know the ultimate choice they had to make and i feel like right now this group including you you i don't know and you i don't become know. jury 
judge, and executioner. For Everyone what? has a choice. Absolutely. Fine. You know what? Kill him. Kill him. Thank you. I cast. No, wait, 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 wait. One, one moment, please. Uh, what? You won't No, 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 Rick W, Rick W, wait, wait, just, 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 just one moment, one moment. Come, come close to me, my friends. Come, come close. And I would like to draw away from the dude. What's his name again? Luvash. Luvash. So draw my, my friends near. Listen. Wait, 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 wait. I do not let him out of my... I, okay, I, I fine. I can't turn my back on. So, so keep an eye on him. That's fine. Fine, keep an eye on him. Look at him. It does not matter. Just come and listen to me for a moment. I believe we are trying to make a decision between the lives of children and the lives of adults. So, I remember our good friend Muskoka, who I am partly responsible for. What happened to him anyway? Not being here. Oh, let me continue. One of his desires was that we would take the the bone grinder and 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 turn it into a uh, an orphanage and i wonder if perhaps as one of our actions is we do not let this man uh take his daughter's life for granted and we leave him to the mists but the girl and this boy we've we give them a new home and for any child who needs help along the way that we discover in our journey in Barovia, in honor of our friend Muskoka, we bring them to our new home, to their new home, where, you know, in fairness, they used to make uh, pies out of children. We could make, uh, we could make new lives for the children of Barovia. What's, what say you? It, it is a suggestion. Some way to bring light into this world. I'm not going to take a child away from her parents. What? He is a monster. As she, as she hears this, Arabel actually stands up and she reaches down and she draws Luvash's sword from its scabbard and kind of holds it kind of wavering in front of him. She looks at all of you, she says, you will not take him, I swear. I will die to defend him. Please, let us be. I have gone through enough. Just let them go. One man is not going to attack an entire village. That's not the, that's not the point. My love, that's not the point. He is this, it is a symbol. He is evil incarnate. To let him go is to say it is okay that they continue to do this. I, the child will learn the, the difference between right and wrong in time. You, you are not the person to tell that that man that he can lose his child and it's okay. This is true. And that that is a and you see him start to get and, and his his um guardian is still there. It, it lasts for eight hours. And the visage of this boy with dragon wings swirling around him. He looks back and he looks at that, the boy, the image of the boy. And he says, and he, he finds himself emotional. And he says, you're right. Perhaps you are right. Perhaps I am now just looking for, 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 for revenge. I don't, I, I know not what to do in this moment. So yeah. I will let it leave it with you. You are the heroes of Barovia, not I. I am a withered old man. So you decide his fate. You decide how you choose to approach the demise of Strahd. If it's in you to continue on this journey. And I'll look at him, I'll spit in his face, Jason. 
If it was to me, you'd be dead already. Child, you'd be better off a thousand times over. And I'll walk back up to the house. And I'll I put myself on mute because I'm so upset. <laughs> I'm going to follow, like, not directly behind him, but I am following him. Okay. <clears throat> um, and at that point, we're going to take a quick break. Um, that is halfway through. We're going to take a short break, uh, and we'll be right back. From the same team who created the world's first foldable metal D20 comes a colorful evolution. Introducing the world's first all-metal, foldable, full-color RPG dice set. Now you can enjoy a full set of foldable RPG dice. Designed with thicker, sturdier metal and in full color by our favorite designers. The two included sheets contain a total of nine dice. 1d20, 1d12, 2d10, 1d8, 3d6, and 1d4. They come in multiple designs and new ones will become unlocked as we reach our stretch goals. Tin Hedrals Foldable Metal Dice by Mithril Armory. Welcome to Dwarven Forge. This is everything you need to know about our terrain in 60 seconds. Ready? Let's go. We hand sculpt our pieces for maximum detail and artistry, infusing passion into every millimeter of our work. Everything is available beautifully hand painted so you can start playing right away. Or you can choose unpainted to paint everything yourself. Our pieces are completely modular so you can use the same sets to create a new adventure every time. Most pieces have embedded anchor magnets that affix to our terrain trays for secure building and for revealing rooms as your players discover them. We create everything out of Dwarvenite, our top secret PVC formula that's nearly indestructible. We pack our pieces with as many features as possible, such as swappable LEDs to quickly change the look of your scene. We offer magnetic accessories to add flavor or increase the danger. A one-inch tactical grid is sculpted into our floors, hidden in dungeon flagstones, natural rocks, or sticks and plants. In addition to sculpted pieces, we make terrain trays to use as a vibrant graphic base for your build. We offer a range of environments, including dungeons, caverns, cities, castles, sewers, forests, mountains, streets, burrows, ice, and hellscape. And that's just the beginning. We have a passionate fan base who can tell you all about it. And that's everything you need to know about Dwarven Forge in 60 seconds. The games we play are the stories we create. The fortress doors swing open. 
Every story is unique. And the sound of war drums rises. Sometimes our stories come to us when we least expect them. We need to be ready no matter where inspiration strikes. And sometimes our stories are told over great distances. No matter where your journey leads you, or how your story is told. The games we play are the stories we create. Sirenscape can help make yours epic. Sirenscape is searchable, fast, and customizable from any device with no need to pre-install any sound. Adding epic atmosphere to your game has never been easier.
from the same team who created the world's first foldable metal D20, comes a colorful evolution. Introducing the world's first all-metal, foldable, full-color RPG dice set. Now you can enjoy a full set of foldable RPG dice. Designed with thicker, sturdier metal and in full color by our favorite designers, the two included sheets contain a total of nine dice. 1d20, 1d12, 2d10, 1d8, 3d6, and 1d4. They come in multiple designs and new ones will become unlocked as we reach our stretch goals. Tin Hedrals Foldable Metal Dice by Mithril Armory. Welcome to Dwarven Forge. This is everything you need to know about our terrain in 60 seconds. Ready? Let's go. We hand sculpt our pieces for maximum detail and artistry, infusing passion into every millimeter of our work. Everything is available beautifully hand painted so you can start playing right away. Or you can choose unpainted to paint everything yourself. Our pieces are completely modular so you can use the same sets to create a new adventure every time. Most pieces have embedded anchor magnets that affix to our terrain trays for secure building and for revealing rooms as your players discover them. We create everything out of Dwarvenite, our top secret PVC formula that's nearly indestructible. We pack our pieces with as many features as possible, such as swappable LEDs to quickly change the look of your scene. We offer magnetic accessories to add flavor or increase the danger. A one-inch tactical grid is sculpted into our floors, hidden in dungeon flagstones, natural rocks, or sticks and plants. In addition to sculpted pieces, we make terrain trays to use as a vibrant graphic base for your build. We offer a range of environments, including dungeons, caverns, cities, castles, sewers, forests, mountains, streets, burrows, ice, and hellscape. And that's just the beginning. We have a passionate fan base who can tell you all about it. And that's everything you need to know about Dwarven Forge in 60 seconds. Games we as we create or swing every beat. and the sounds times our stories come expect them. We need to be ready no matter where inspiration strikes. And sometimes our stories are told over great distances. No matter where your journey leads you or how your story is told. The games we play are the stories we create. Sirenscape can help make yours epic. Sirenscape is searchable, fast, and customizable from any device with no need to pre-install any sound. Adding epic atmosphere to your game has...
and we're back. At this point, um, Rictavio uh, has has taken off. Esmeralda is following him. Uh, let's go back to Travas just for one minute. Um, Travas, you've made your way through another quarter of the wagons. Uh, the last one you get to, though, has two iron padlocks secure to the door. Mm. Um, <laughs> which is way That's more secure than the other ones were. Uh, I forgot <laughs> yeah. to tell you earlier. Obviously, you'll, you'll put two in together. But Falfer, you found a key on, on uh, Aragal. Um, okay. But anyways, Travas. Um, yeah. What do you want to do? Uh, I'd like to try to pick the locks. Okay, give me a sleight of hand check. There's no, there's no like, do do not enter signs. This Vardo is under pressure. No, nothing like that. Okay. Uh, first sleight of hand is 18. Okay. The second is, a, ooh, 13. Give me a dexterity saving throw. Uh, do you have lock picking I tools? I can use. I have yes, and I have fast hands, which uh, yeah. uh, you can use the bonus action granted by your cunning action to make a sleight of hand check. Uh, use use your thieves. Wait, I'm reading the wrong thing. I think. Oh no, I can use your thieves tool to dis disarm a trap. Yeah, sorry, it, it's not. Uh, it's not bonus. It's action. not a sleight of hand check. It's a it's a proficiency check with your with your tools. Okay. So you make a so dexterity what, what check. And then add your oh, I see. add your tool proficiency with lock picks. Don't know how to do that. Um, so just roll d twenty. Yeah. And then add whatever your lock picking, or your um. Oh come on! Tool, you should have a tool proficiency number there. Yeah, I rolled a six. Okay. With my dice. Um, give me a dexterity save. Okay. Um, but I, I have, I also have, uh, uh, evasion. So when I'm subjected to a deck saving throw, uh, instead of taking half the damage, I'm going to take, uh, wait, evasion. When you are subjected to an effect that allows you to make a deck saving throw, yeah. you take only half, instead of taking only, to take only half the damage, instead take no damage if you succeed on the throw and half if you fail. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so, so what, what's throw. your deck saving throw? <laughs> uh, that's not it, sorry. Uh, it's uh, 19. Okay, with the 19, you take six points of poison damage as when you when you go to grab it, you feel a, a prick in the back of your hand on the first lock. Little prick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, that's the first lock? Yeah, and you're not able to uh, to unlock it using your... As you start to fiddle with it, it, it does it and it breaks your concentration. Um, so you can try and, and pick it again if you want. Yes, I would like another dex check. It's a dex check plus your proficiency modifier. Uh, 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 your proficiency uh, bonus. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, there it is. Lock okay. picking. Oh, Tools. yes. Uh, 26. Okay. Out of curiosity, yep. do you have, uh, could you have expertise? Do you have... Are you, ex are you Do you have expertise in these tools, or did you pick that as one of your choices? Or no. If you do, you would double your proficiency. No, I don't. Okay. Just so you know. Okay. So the first one opens Ow. successfully. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh, we'll try I attempt it. the other. Yep. No? Yeah. Yes? Okay. <laughs> uh, it's an 18. Okay. You go to grab it again and give me a dexterity saving oh my throw. Gosh. <laughs> Probably should have checked it first. 24. Okay. With a 24, um, you take only six points again. As <laughs> Again, you feel... Ah! <laughs> as if you didn't learn the first time. You're obviously oh, trying to God. rush because you know that they're coming back. Yeah. Uh, gosh, this sucks. Getting hurt like this. Yeah. Uh, Another question. Are, is, he, is he saving on those or no? He's just getting damage. Is, is he getting... Is he succeeding on his save? Yes. Then he's not taking any damage. He has evasion. Yeah, I think I was reading it wrong. That's how I understood evasion. Is that, is that uh, if you take half damage, you take, you take no, no damage. damage. If you take full damage. But isn't it just once a turn? Is, isn't it limited? It's not every time. When you are subjected, when you're subjected to an effect that allows you to make a deck save. Okay, every time. Then you don't take any damage yeah. from those. Sick, but but still annoying. Okay. The, the little no damage prick was annoying. And what was your what was your second uh, lock pick? 
roll. Oh man, I gotta go through my the the, the history now. Did, did you did you um, roll the you rolled the second one right? Eighteen, I think you said. Yeah, it okay. was eighteen. Then yes, you're able to pick the second one as well. Oh, I see what's going on. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, 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 can I check for traps before I open the door? Yep. Investigation <laughs> check. <laughs> I've been pricked twice. Uh, it's uh, oh gosh, come on, twelve. Okay. Um, you don't seem. It doesn't seem trapped. The door doesn't seem trapped. <laughs> this is terrible. Okay. This is terrible. Let's go back to All the party right, real quick. Yeah. Um, oh, Rictavio, you and you've stormed off Esmeralda. You're following Rictavio. What do you do? And are, are all the rest of you staying with Luvash, just to be clear, mm -hmm. for the time? Yeah. Okay. How far away am I at this point? You, you're able to catch up. I mean, Rictavio is kind of hoofing it, but you can you can catch up if you wanted to I'll be on his heels. Stop! Wait! I'll stop. Where are you going? Away. Why are you even... Why are you even here? If you're just gonna go. I never intended you to understand or figure out who I was. And in that moment, Jason, I'll take off. He's got a hat of disguise on. Yeah. Right? And he'll remove his hat. And in that moment, you'll see Rotavio um, become, indeed, turn into Van Richten, the man that basically raised you. And uh, he looks, I, I, I look ashamed. And I'll say to you, I'll say, um, sweet girl. There is none that are near me that ever survive. Erasmus, who still hangs behind him in this visage of this boy, golden boy dragon. Remember the story I told you when you were a wee little Fistani, much like that girl there. This moment is overwhelming for you with the same child that she was all those years ago. I had to drive a stake into my own son's heart. I am cursed. Anyone near me is also cursed. They die repeatedly. I could not have it again with you. So that is why I covered my thoughts and he holds up the magic ring. I disguised my visage and I removed myself, hence, keeping myself as close to you as I possibly could. I did not know you were inside. I never would have cast that spiritual guardian if you were there. I have been looking for you this entire time. I know, child, and I have been right there below you, right beneath your eyes. Why didn't you tell me? Don't you understand I couldn't? I could not open you up to that that weakness. So you were just going to lie to me this whole time? As long as I needed to, yes. In my mind's eye, it did not work out like this. In my mind's eye, as we were vanquishing Strahd together, I would take off my hat and we would celebrate for, for years on end until I withered and died an old man. But here we are. Here we are, my child. I love you deeper and more than I ever could have possibly imagined. Then why do you keep leaving? Because it is not about you and it is not about I. It is about something much greater. The death of that monster is all that needs to matter now. If it matters so much, you know that this, we can only defeat him together. I guess. And that is why I am in your life. That is why you see me when you need me. That is why I'm never far away. Never. I always have eyes on you. But my work takes me other places. Where? Don't you understand that? Where is more important than here? 
What is more important than this? The were ravens who watch over and fight in the shadows against straw have sent me on a mission. But before I go, I was going to put the, the spear's end to the Stani once and for all. That work here is done. And what you choose to do with that monster, what your group of heroes chooses to do with, those, with that monster, I will leave that to you. But I have other work to do, and I will return. I always do. And you see, he's old. He's withering. He's tired. He's beaten. Don't cry. Why are you crying? Don't be upset. I do it only for you, child. You lied. You lied to me. Repeatedly. I did. And I would do it all again. For the last thing you need to be worrying about in any moment is where I am, how am I doing, and what comes next for me. The only thing you should be worried about your power being applied to the death and destruction of that monster. There's only so few of us fighting right now. We need you. You, you can't just go. Actually, I know not who that Noggins is, but he is forthright and strong. I know not who that other boy child is running around doing the bidding of you who is that i know not but since last we met you have become stronger i saw you go into ravenloft i watched as you emerged better stronger closer to his demise you are so close you have the weapons you are missing one weapon once you have that, you can rise up and defeat him. You need not worry about me. You are stronger than I am. The collection of you is, has come farther than any warrior ever has to defeating him. Don't you see? Where others have fallen, you have risen. Where others have died, you have become stronger. Every day, their souls topple from the top of Ravenloft into the abyss. Every day, the souls come cascading down. And you still live stronger. I, I don't always know what the right thing to do is. I don't know what to do with that man. Or his child. I don't have all the answers. No, neither do I. But trust your instincts. Know that you, not long ago, were that exact same Vistoni child. Remember, you were taken from these monsters and raised to be the hero that you are now. So go back. Trust your brethren. Trust your friends. Trust that noggin. His spirit is true. You will find the right thing to do. It will come to you, child. And in the meantime, I walk off into the mist once again to do the bidding of what is the only thing that is important in this godforsaken land. To end the reign of that monster straw. And with that, he dispatches his spirit garden into the ether. Erasmus. May he forever watch over you and watch over me. Watch over all of us. In that moment, his... Nora, you watch over Matt, uh, over Van Richten's shoulder, and you see Erasmus standing, smiling in your direction. Sometimes I, I knew can... it. Right, go ahead. What were you saying? That's how I knew it was you. Because I've seen him. He goes white. Yeah. And Richton goes white. 
You watch as Erasmus behind Vindrichton goes. What do you say? You see him. Do you, do you see him now? Do you see my boy now? Looking over his shoulder again and seeing him nod no. I've seen him before. That is how I knew. He is stuck in his mist. But I believe he is watching all of us. And he will continue to do so until the end. Go, child. Go back to your party. Go back to the fellowship of your heroes. Will I see you again? We never know, do we? We just never know. And with that, he'll turn on his heels and he'll start to walk away. And the rest of the party watches as on the side of the hill, he watches Rictavio and Esmeralda have a heated, intimate conversation. Um, while you all debate what to do internally with Luvash. And Rictavio rips off his hat, and you see, uh, you see him turn into the visage of an old, white-haired man with just a wisp of hair on the top of his head and on the sides, small gold glasses. He carries a cane with a, a brown leather overcoat. And he says final word to Esmeralda, and you see him turn, and you see him start to walk off. Thank you, Matt Lillard, for joining us again. It has been incredible <laughs> to have you a part of this journey. Um, love you so much, and uh, you have an awesome night, and we'll see you again. Hopefully, sometime. I was just going to walk off into oblivion, but then I came back. Yeah, <laughs> I, just wanted to I say you thank all. you. Love have you, dude. I just want to pass on that I was at a con this weekend in Pittsburgh and people were asking about the show. The show's brilliant. It's brilliant playing with brilliant players. Uh, Omega, it's so effing great to see you with this great group of, uh, of players. I love you. Hopefully to come back someday soon. Bye, guys. Well, we'll see you Thursday, <laughs> at least. <laughs> see <you later>. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't forget Thursday. <laughs> yeah. I'll see you all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, awesome. Esmeralda, you're st you watch as Esmeralda stands, tears kind of pouring down her cheeks. You all stand with Luvash as he, as Arabel has kind of relaxed a little bit and, and the weight of the sword is weighing down and she's now rested it on the ground, but she still holds it tight. You see her knuckles white. I look at the rest of the party. You all have been friends way before I came here, before Travas came here. So I know you all are close. You all don't have any reason to heed my words. But I come from a place that honestly isn't too far from this. It may be bright and beautiful, but it's just as chaotic. And people make choices, beings make choices based on what they have in front of them. I am not saying they are good. I don't know them to even hint at that. They have done wrongs in the service of someone who has brought this dream upon everyone, but I do not think forcing them to do whatever is the right thing to do. That just continues the cycle of enslavement and wrongdoing. If they don't feel safe with Gacchus, if they don't feel safe with us, then let them be. They won't be doing his bidding anymore, and that is what we all want, right? Yes, to rid the land of the influence of Strahd altogether. But what 
What do we do with those who have already done evil in his name? We don't base it on what they've done. We base it on what they're going to do. And if some we find continue, then yes, they will meet a grave. I will personally dig it. But if we are to stop this dream, if we are to break free from this nightmare, we can't just end everyone. Some people are able to be saved. Yes. We all find ourselves asking very difficult questions. I'm sorry, Dimitri and Sterling, if I came down hard on you. Uh, I have made bad decisions myself. Who am I to judge? Uh, and my friends, Travis, uh, I am sorry as well. I I have my own flaws. And Travis and... isn't there. Sorry. He hears a whisper on the wind. <laughs> and, and I look. I look over my shoulder and say, "Oh shit." Should not have said that. Uh, Sterling goes over and hugs Falfer, basically like a bend down, pick up hug. I didn't mean to disappoint you, my friend. <laughs> I'm, then, uh, I'm proud of you, little one. Very proud. Proud Thank of you, me. old man. Um... Perhaps, well, for then, this time, I'll put it to you as one who has done things you regret in the past and come out the other side reformed. What, what sort of destiny would you have for Luvash and the girl? Ah, <laughs> uh, I do. I, I do not know. I do not know Dimitri. I, it is so hard to tell right from wrong here. Uh, we, we, we do have, in my opinion, a responsibility to give a second chance at least. Uh, perhaps, perhaps that's, just, that's all I, I really hoped for is as you gave me a second chance that we would be able to give it to others as well. I go over closer to the two, Luvash and Arabelle. And there's, there's a genuine warmth that comes from Noggins, even though right now he probably looks very agitated. Um, he can't he can't shake that, but he he looks at them and asks. Firstly, is Luvash hurt? Uh, well, yeah, he took a tumble, but but not very, just scuffed. Okay. Um. He looks at Luvash and Arabelle. You said you have a way to to leave, to just walk through the mist and never return. Yes, I do. How? We are allowed to, the Vistani. We come and go as we please. Is there a power? Is there a, just a gift? Only the will of Strahd. Then go. Don't come back. I tend to see a lot, so I'll probably know if you do come back. He looks over at the other Vistani that Dimitri currently has kind of by the scruff of the neck. And that he's been quiet this whole time, just kind of looking around like, what's going to happen to me? Take the ones who are here. Everyone else, I can't promise their safety. The ones who are here, if you truly mean what you say, you are done working for Strahd. You are done being his puppet. You are done taking lives. You leave. 
You live and you don't return. He reaches around Arabelle and he grabs the sword. He says, it's okay, child. And he takes it and he sheaths it. He stands up carefully watching you all. You will not see me again. And he hefts her up on his, on his side. And he starts making his way towards the horse that was still the, the last horse. As, um, as he turns and starts to leave, I'll yell to him and I'll say, You were wrong about one thing, Lubash. We are not Strahd's biggest target. He is ours. You may go. I'm going to yell out, Esmeralda! Esmeralda! Can you... Can you do something with that boy? Send him off over here. Uh, I don't respond. I just slowly walk towards the tent. Okay. All right. Um, Luvash mounts up on the horse. The bo- the other Vistani, and he's just like a thin, kind of scrawny Vistani, colorful clothing, little goatee that hangs long, and he just looks around and he says, so what happened to me? Can I go too? Just go. This is the one I took? Yeah. Um. Oh, this is, I'm sorry, I th- this isn't yeah. the one that I tied up? No, no. Okay, never mind. Okay, I'll, I'll look back down at him and I'll release him from my hold. And so he he has moved. He can move, and uh, yeah, he kind I'll of, say, "Yeah, go ahead." I'll say to him, "If we ever see you again before Strahd is vanquished, I will kill you myself." Go. And he turns off. He bolts. <laughs> and at this point, you hear Luvash trot off with Arabelle. And as they kind of go off, Arabelle's over his shoulder as they go away, and she watches all of you with an intense gaze as they ride off into the mist. Travas, you open the door to this wagon, and you see it is full of treasure. Oh. And you imagine it's where the Vistani clan, this clan, kept all of their treasure locked away. Um, you start to kind of look around. You see a wooden chest, uh, and you open up the lid. There's like 12... Uh, there's like... I'll just tell you. Uh... I'm going to send you a screenshot of what is in here. That's going to be it's easy. It's more than it'll fit in my pack. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. You see a wooden <laughs> chest. Um, you see an iron, another iron chest. You see a jewelry box. You see a wooden throne with gold inlay. Um, you see <laughs> an exquisite rug that's rolled up. Um, and another small wooden box um, as well. So uh, I, I throw the, the hubcaps in. Yeah. And I close the doors. Okay. Um, can I can I disable this poisonous prick from the lock? <laughs> can, can I just disable that feature? I'm gonna say given time for the sake of brevity, yes. Okay, and I'll put the locks back on. Okay. Um, and I'm I'm going to uh, I'm going to grab some food from that barrel, and walk over towards the party. Uh, and ask, uh, what did I miss? <laughs> okay, so as you're coming up the hill, Esmeralda, Travas emerges from the tent, coming down the hill. And asks, grinning. Grinning. And asks, what did I miss? <laughs> Nothing. I just walk past him. Uh, I will follow her. I found, I found... I found treasure. Esmeralda. What? I, I found treasure. I found a lot of treasure. Hurry for you. Where is the boy? Uh, the one that was in the tent? I yes. I think probably he's, he's still in the tent. Uh, DM. <laughs> I yeah. keep and walking I was grabbing towards some food. <laughs> yeah, so you came around the tent. So um, as, uh, as, you, uh, as you clear... Uh, the tent, you look through, 
Uh, nobody, he's gone. Oh, uh, well, I say he's in the tent, and I'll just keep going towards uh, the rest of the party, who would definitely be interested in treasure. Okay. All right, you all see Travas coming towards you. Uh, I will hurry towards Falfer, because he seems like he would be the most interested. Falfer! Falfer! I found some treasure. Yes, treasure. A lot of treasure. A lot. Ready? What should, should what we? The, what should, what should what we do with treasure? Everything. I mean, I saw a rag, and that was not quite as interesting. But there was a throne, <laughs> and chests full of coins. I don't know. I don't. I don't feel like treasure right now. Just put the lock on the door, and we'll have to deal with with it later. Okay. Maybe I'll. Uh, okay. Um, I'm gonna go back. Oh, gosh, everybody's so down. <laughs> uh, I'll. I'll go back. I'm gonna go back after the Vardo. I'm gonna try to tie some horses to the Vardo. Okay. Can I gonna leave it there. Yeah. Okay. That All would right. be the true madness of this whole thing. Okay, so you start to you go up, you untether some of the horses, um, and you know that some of the some of the wagons that you did um, search earlier in that second kind of quarter, um, they uh, some of them were family wagons, like with with children's belongings and beds. They must have like snuck out during all of the craziness, um, right? As well. Uh, what do you all do? Um, I'm literally just sitting down outside of the tent and like drinking from a wine skin. Okay. I look at the others. Um, we did, we did find out that we have, well, at some point, um, I think his name was Kaz, Kaz, Kaz Casimir. Um, Mm -hmm. They want to go to the Amber Temple. They said that would be a good place for us, but not right now. And I kind of agree, not right now, too. Um, I think we hmm. should probably just go back to Argenvost or maybe Gakis. I don't know. Maybe Gak Gakis. They have to be warned just in case the others didn't get the same memo. And I just, from far back, drinking, he's right. I think either way, there were some who escaped who may still be aligned with Strawn. We should, we should burn this whole place. I know okay. a thing or two about how to destroy a Vardo. But don't, don't let, don't let Ezzy hear you say that. Casimir, you watch as he starts walking up the hill with his three guards. Away from us or towards us? Towards you. As he approaches and you watch as Dusk Elves kind of come from down the hill up and around and start to kind of encircle your area. Casimir nods to all of you. Where will you go now? I do not know. We cannot stay here. No, but you could go to Gakis if you wish. I'm sure that they would receive you. It's not a bad idea, actually. Thank you. You're welcome. Please think... don't hesitate to contact us when the time comes. Well, I think we should all go. I would not run. No offense, I know that Dusk Elves aren't necessarily bad people, but a group of, a big group of people going to Gak. I, I really don't know what Gakis is, but I'm assuming it's like a place of more Vistani, good Vistani. Um, it just, if they, if we, if you Dawn Beakers go with them, if I make it better, yes. I just think that they need to be warned just in case. That is true. And I don't 
think I'm not really smart, but I'm really wise. I don't really think we should burn this place. But they'll come back. They'll rearm themselves. We can take stuff. I think the boy said there was treasure. We can take things, but burning this place puts eyes upon this place. And if Strahd knows they're dead or gone or destroyed, that causes him to act faster. He would be like a cornered animal. Should we alert him to everything we do? No, it it makes sense. Let's just go. Casimir says, we can help to take some of the horses and some of the wagons. Perhaps those at Gakis could use the wagons. Yeah, true. If we, uh, if we all, if we all man a avado ourselves, and perhaps we can just clear this place out and see what they can use at Gakis. I could pull one. I don't know if I can. I probably could talk to the animal and make sure it guides me correctly. His vengeance will be swift as soon as he hears. Which we is why we fast. shouldn't alert him that we have done this. Of course. His eyes are everywhere. Then let's mm. go. Okay. As we're getting up to go, I'll go over to Esmeralda and, uh, I mean, obviously noticing that she's down, I'll, I'll just like pull out both of my crossbows and, and kind of balance them both on the hilts of the tips of my fingers. I'll just like, uh, is he look is pretty, pretty good, huh? Oh. <laughs> just trying to bring some levity to the situation. Okay? I mean, <laughs> I'm not really okay, but I mean, probably a little better okay than you are. I mean, maybe, how are you feeling? I'm fine. Let's es, go. Esmeralda, you are upset. What were you talking to Rick Tavio about? It doesn't matter. Rick Tavio comes in like a storm, destroys everything in his path, and then leaves. Better that we just go. I look, I look to the others and I say, let's, let's go. Let's just go. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we're going to just out of character. We're going to take some of the Vardos, some of the horses. We're going to take the Vardo with the treasure. Of course. Yes. We're all going to head out to get us. Yep. All right. So you all, I would say that amongst all of you, you could take all 12 Vardos if you wanted to amongst all the guards and all the, all the, all the desk elves. Um, and it takes you approximately half an hour to 45 minutes just to assemble everything and gather everything and then make your way out towards, uh, back to Gakis. Um, you're looking at one, two, three, uh, hang on, sorry. You're looking at about three hours travel to Gakis. At this point, you all just create a big, long caravan. Um, you pass some Barovians on the road. Um, at what point? No, I won't ask that. All right. Um, you all pull up to the north gate of Gakis, and they greet you. Um, and to their surprise, you have a whole f new fleet of 12 Vardos um, that you... And without actually speaking as Gakis, we can kind of summarize what happens. Um, I will, though, for the time that you you spend here, we'll say that you can interact in Gakis throughout the next couple of days at least, and with the Vistani for a little while um, within the Discord, which would be great um, f to make up for the time that you spend there now. Um, you could even spend some downtime if you'd like here. Uh, how many, how long would you like to spend in Gakis before moving on and doing something else? I think we'd all at least want to at least rest and 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 not for a bit. 
Yeah. What time of day would it be at this point? Uh, late afternoon. Early evening. Oh, by the time you get there, it's like the sun's starting to set. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> I'd, I'd want to park uh, this Vardo in the Dawnbringer's camp, okay. if they'd let me. Yep, of course. Um, and I would talk to Ludari um, and ask him to keep an eye on it. You try and find Ludari, and you realize that he's no longer with the clan. Uh, they're not really talking about where he went. They also say that the other elders, other than Jardani, are also no longer with the camp, and they've been called out on other business. And that Jardani mm -hmm. is actually leading, Gwarl is leading, and kind of the elder that speaks for the rest of the camp. Um, you, he meets you, and as you settle in and take care of the Vardos, and you move the Vardo over to the, the, the Dawnbringer area, um, he welcomes you all, and you all have a conversation about, and catch up on on the you know result of the last number of days that you've been adventuring. Um, he tells you of a group um, called the Order of Ravensbane who have come to seek out open portals within Barovia, uh, and they've actually even called upon some of the um, higher-powered Vistani to um, adventure with them, to quest with them, and to help them in their, in their quest. Um, he speaks of continual attacks on the road. I'm assuming you tell him about the Vistani camp and what just happened. Is there anything that you yeah. leave out or don't share about your travels i uh i'll i'll speak up and just say uh this uh this uh order of uh, ravensbane i look to the others are they a special or do they have uh are they, are they like uh, the dunbringers are they uh you know lesser heroic you know second rate probably right <laughs> He says that they are very accomplished, um, but they have a very specific um, purpose uh, and are very purpose-driven in, in their pursuit, um, that they are powerful and that they have been here and were here about a decade prior. And for somehow, somehow we're able to leave the mists and return and that they have a keep over by Lake Zarovich, which you all remember you saw as soon as he says yes. it. And that's where yes. they take up residence. Yeah. While we have, I mean, if it, if not as anything else to uh, Guaro, um, while we have a little downtime here, um, just kind of getting our bearings. I'm assuming we're probably in somebody's Vardo, or we're just like in our in the Dawnbringer camp area. Yeah. So there's a Dawnbringer tent where where tent, yeah, you tent, all yeah. have area. Uh, you've never stayed there, uh, Omega. This Neither is my first Travos. time coming to Gakus. Yeah, yeah. But Travas, you still have your Vardo over in Ludari. Um, yeah, I would. Uh, so housekeeping stuff. I would, if knowing that Ludari's not there, I would find Kyle and ask her to watch over the new Vardo. Uh, I'd go and make sure my horses are alive <laughs> and that they're being fed and watered. Um, I would find anybody that I, I encountered and tell them everything. Like I would sit around the campfire and just tell everything that happened. <laughs> and then while that was happening, <laughs> I would have been with the others and I say, There is one my mind keeps focusing on whenever I um, am confused and discombobulated from what happened before, and that's Miss Goka. You said he was gone, but I mean, I'm not. I do know things, and I know how the world works. 
but I would like, um, I would like to know what happened to my friend. Yeah. He, he died, Narkins. When we fought the creature that had imprisoned you in the goat form, He was killed by some of her minions. I'm sorry to have to tell you this. We have been mourning him ever since and uh, with everything that's been going on, we've just thrown ourselves into this business to try and hide from it. And uh, though you have asked in the past, we we just couldn't talk about it. I'm assuming this conversation is happening around the fire, kind of throughout the night. Um, is everyone yeah. at the fire? Is everyone present? Okay. Mm -hmm. And you guys have your mm -hmm. personal campfire in Gakis, in the Dawnbringer area. I'm sorry, Noggins, to have kept you in the dark this long. We should have had this conversation much earlier. Just didn't know how to tell you. It's okay. Um, I didn't really get to talk to him, so I just wanted to... Uh, I just wanted to uh, hear it. He, he would have loved you here now and talking to you. Yes, if, um, if I'm, I'm being completely honest, I... I felt that your arrival was a bit of a sign that Muskoka was still with us, as he was the one who found you originally, and and now now here you are. And well, well I'm, we're glad you're here. I didn't mean to keep any of this from you. It's just didn't know how to tell you. It's, no, um, I don't think you all um, did anything on purpose. I just, I started to realize um, when he wasn't with us in, in Argenvoss, and then he didn't come with us to the camp. And uh, I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be in the stream with you all. But I just, he seemed like a cool guy. I remember I, <laughs> I, 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 I jumped on, I jumped on a scarecrow. It tasted really nasty. Yes, you saved us in a way. You I did. don't understand how one of the Dawnbringers could die when all of the rumors they've told are true about you. We are not gods, Dropas. We die just like anyone. Yes. To every to every dawn there is a dusk and Muskoka met his before all of us. <laughs> We failed him too many times. This time it's stuck. And there definitely are no heroes here. You just do what you can. I'm sorry to Dad. shatter whatever illusions you may have, Travas. During all of this, Falfer is just quietly taking it all in, realizing that there's nothing he's ever going to do to bring Muskoka back. There's no revivify. There's no, and suddenly just a wave of actual emotion hits him and he just starts sobbing by the fire. Just being like, I, I, I could not bring him back. I could not convince him to stay. I had that one last chance and 
He... He had no good reason to stay. I gave him no good reason. He... I just quietly put my arm around him on his shoulder. I... I would forever regret teasing him and treating him poorly. I hope he knows that I... I I feel so bad. And I wanted only to be his friend. And now he's gone. And all of this... All of this pain would be less difficult if he was here with us. But he's not. Nuggets. I'm sorry your friend is not here for you. Hmm. Where tears are dropping from Falfer, the ground's going to begin to shift as a red flower grows. And it almost looks like it almost looks like it could be plaid. <laughs> and he reaches down and he'll hand it to Falfer. I mean, you all are my friends too. And we're in this dream together, so um let's do what we can to get out. Agreed. Agreed. Yes. But can we please go to sleep? It's been a long day. <laughs> yes. Hmm. Ah, oh, this is fire. The smoke was blowing this way, and my my eyes were a little watery. It's so strange. I'm not usually uh, so reacting to smoke, but tonight it's very strange. I uh, I think the smoke got us all. Hmm. All right. Does anybody know Noggins? You you are in Travas. You are both quite new. Do either of you know any ways to keep? Hags away in the night. Ah, uh, mm. yes. Good question, Sterling. Well, uh, we all, always uh, talk about light in the fires at night, and uh, so far, so good. What did I... Uh, I was going to ask this, too, because I rode pretty well to learn, to know about what a night hag is, just being fae. Even though they're not fae anymore, they once were. Do I know... Especially after being affected by it, do I know... Um, what are ways to counteract or prevent them from getting to you? A circle of salt or something? Uh, good question. Um, in the I moment, know there are ways, yeah, there yeah. are things you can yeah. do. I guess I, I don't know them right now. Yeah, I don't, I'm, yeah, yeah okay. of course. Um, and I don't, we don't know if Noggins would necessarily know either. Um, but give me a, um, as you're trying to recall now in the moment, give me a nature check, please. Nature. Yeah. Nineteen. Okay. Um, yeah, I think he knows hags. Yeah. He so, just doesn't know night hags that well. Or yeah, so anything... Studies. Y- yeah, you imagine that protective magic... Would uh, would surrounding or affecting those that are sleeping would stop the connection from potentially happening. That they couldn't maybe haunt dreams and understanding dreams and nightmares. That you imagine some sort of protection magic would be able to potentially keep those that sleep safe. Gotcha. Um. We don't encounter much of their kind in the Feywild. Um, but there's still 
they still can can in, in, intrude uh, when you're not fully um, cognizant. If you have um, anything like a like things to protect, like I can protect things from like evil, but I don't know how effective that will be. I know there are other magics like 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 things that can maybe encase you, encircle you, things like that that hedge things out. Those could work. I don't have access to that though. Perhaps we could talk to some of the enchanters here in Gakis, and maybe they could make something for us. You don't need to trust magic. Magic is like, you can't even see it. He's, he leans down and starts making a fire. Fires don't need to go. I, 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 I just I smack him in the back of the head. And I, <laughs> I, I, at the same time, I close my hand as that fire goes out. <laughs> <laughs> but magic is very capable of doing things you don't want it to do. And then I'll wave it and it comes back. That's right. Leave my fire alone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, going to light my fire and we'll see who is safe tonight. Yeah, as I turn around and go, uh, so uh, how do we get this protection circle or whatever? Um, <laughs> I'm Esmeralda, very... do you, I don't know your capabilities. Do you have anything protective like, like a circle or anything? Yes, but it'll only last an hour. Uh. I, I, I feel like as long as you sleep, as long as you begin, it won't. It, it, I don't know if it's worth a try or not. I'll protect myself at least for, I mean, it's gonna not doesn't last long, but it'll at least be there as I go to sleep. You're I mean, using, I'll do magic circle. Okay, so you're doing magic circle. You're doing protection from good and evil? Yeah. Okay. Um, magic circle has a range of 10 feet. It's a 10 yeah. foot radius, so it's 20. So you'd all have to sleep pretty tight. Well, I'll make sure it, go, it goes over specifically towards Falfer. Falfer gets night hag nightmares, and then who yeah. else gets night hag nightmares? Is it just Sterling. Falfer? Noggins was affected. Sterling, I Noggins. do, but I'm going to I at least. Need I'm, I'm going, yes, I would, I'll probably want to be in there too. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, um, I'll, They'll I'll know. Have my own personal guess as it begins. I don't know. It doesn't last long, but at least as I pass out. Yeah. Okay. Huddle like, for warmth. So yeah. magic circles an hour and protection is ten minutes, right? Ten minutes, yeah. Okay. All right. So you all settle in. Um, I'll use protection from good and evil on myself too, just okay. sort of following along. Okay. Good. All right. Well, you all settle into slumber, and you spend the next, I'll say, two days in Gakis, two full days. Um, you share the documents and the letters. I'm assuming with the people of Gakis with Elder Jardani. Um, he obviously looks incredibly concerned um, when you do. Um, the second night that you're there, Falfer, um, <laughs> you know, every right, night... I'll see you guys next next uh, season. <laughs> It'll be fun, guys. It'll be super fun. Let's, you know... <laughs> I'm Sorry, assuming Jake. that no problem. I'm assuming that you know the same thing is cast every night. We can just say that. So you have the best hour of sleep that you've ever had, and oh, it, yes. you know that first hour of every night is basically like awesome. And it's yep. just the, the 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 peace of mind to know that you are protected. And by the time it wears out, the two, the the night before was fine, or the two nights before, because um, I said you'd stay for another two days. So this is the end of the third night. The end of the third night. Um, you wake up and you are currently treading water. And as far as you can see is gray overcast mist as far as the eye can see. And basically, um, the water is about here as you kind of swim. It's cold, frigid. What do you mean by that, Jay? <laughs> Just a, kidding. <laughs> that joke was okay. really last week. Cold, frigid? Yeah. yeah. What do you do? 
Um, am I aware that I'm dreaming? Am I lucid dreaming? Insight. Uh, that would be a 17. By this point, yes. By this point, you know. Um, your other yeah. dreams with the hags, though, were um, you actually saw them and they tormented you and so on. Uh, you've had a, a vision type dream before. You've had these. Um, but this time you're totally in your dream. You don't step out of your body. You're not looking down at your body. You're in the dream. Mm -hmm. um, in that moment, you feel something brush uh, uh, across your foot. Mm. As it startles you and you start to, your heart starts to race. You start to hear your, your heartbeat in your ears and you feel something clutch your leg. And you pull it away, and then something clutches your other leg. And it brings you under for a second, and you fight to... <laughs> and you fight, and you fight to, to, to come back up to surface, and you break the surface again. Take in a deep breath, and it pulls you under again. And as the second time it pulls you under, it pulls you under with such strength that, that you look up and you see that there's feet above. And as you sink, you watch as the, the overcast light begins to leave mm. you look down and you see a silver gauntleted hand around your ankle and in the darkness you watch as two purple orbs light up the water and then you feel your other ankle grabbed by another hand. And you look down and you watch black hair obscuring a face. And as it passes, it's the face of Dimitri. You look back again and the purple orbs glow enough that you see the face of Sterling as they drag you into the depths until darkness, darkness, darkness you wake up suddenly you look around the tent and you see your sleeping comrades it's still dark the fire that was in the center of the tent is just embers but you feel something in your hand what do you do i check my hand to see what i feel now it's there. dark and so you can't even see inside the tent at this point it's pitch darkness. Okay. Um, I'll uh, I'll get up and bring it close to the embers and blow on the embers until there's enough light to see. Okay. As you bring it close, you open your hand, and you watch uh, as a in your hand you have a glass vial, and it's mm. there's a note attached to the vial, using a braid of hair. That's tied as string. And you watch as beads of cloudy gray oil form on the outside of the vial, and then they quickly evaporate. Well, okay, so beads of something were forming on the outside of the vial, and then they Bead, go away. Beads of a gray oil form, and then and then evaporate. And it okay. continues, almost like it's sweating. But then they evaporate huh. just as quickly as they... And like I said, then there's a note attached using a braid of... I will uh, I will open the vial and attempt to pull out the note. So the, the note's attached to the to the side of the vial, like it's okay, tied cool. around with a braid of hair and is and is tied to the side. It's not oh, inside the vial. The I vial see. is okay. stoppered and there's a liquid inside, great oily mm. liquid inside. So I will pull off the note and and attempt to read it by the embers. Okay, as you kind of get close to it and you start to read, it says, "Dearest little Falfer." It appears that you are more alone than ever, and my heart oozes with pity for you. Don't be deceived. The only person you can trust is yourself. The only person you can save is yourself. It's time to take care of yourself. I have a proposition for you. Come see me alone. And I will end this. Actually, you know what? At this point, can everybody else take your earphones out? <laughs> sorry. Jay? I'm sorry. I love y'all. I'm sorry. I love y'all. 
Falfer. I have a proposition for you. Come see me alone. And I will end the suffering you have experienced at my hands. Though we may not have the fondest history, we have a common enemy. We all just want to go home and rid this land of this tyranny, do we not? Not enough? I have the secret to entering his castle and the means to do so if we strike a bargain. I will give you this information when you come visit. You will find me where you lost your last friend, perhaps the only true friend you had. Unfortunate you didn't know that at the time until it was too late. Just apply the entirety of this oil to your body when you arrive and we can finally speak again, face to face, while you're awake. Your dearest grandmother, ever watchful, Morgantha. Okay. Um, hmm. I will. I'll get up, Jay, okay. from my okay. from my bedroll. Very stealthily. Well, you were already up by the by the fire by the embers. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure that as I get up, like I'm I'm crouched by the fire for the yeah. embers. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna get up very stealthily. Okay. And. Um, are there, am I aware of any other fires in the camp at all? You're in a tent right now. You can't see the rest of the camp at all. Okay. All you see is your companions resting and you see Sterling sitting in his usual or standing in his usual sentry position. Uh, right. He's, he's not sleeping. He's kind of, he can see me, no problem. Um, I'll, I'll attempt to, uh, come out of wherever Sterling can see me. Like, I'm assuming he has a range of sight of depending on where he's standing, I guess. Sure. Um, and and try to stealthily come out of the tent. Give me a stealth check. Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. Um, it's a it's an eight. Okay. Was that a natural one? No, it's a two. Okay. All right. I'm gonna get everybody to put their ears back in. Is he dead? No. <laughs> he died. He died. He totally died. Um, Sterling. Oh. You there? Yeah. Okay. In your sentry's rest, um, do you have dark vision? Um, no. Okay. Um, what's your passive perception? Fifteen. Um, would you? Are you fully aware um, using sound and? Yep, I'm, I'm. I'm completely conscious. I'm just in, like in stasis. Okay. Like I'm just not moving. So you hear um, one of your companions shift, um, and you hear them kind of scuffle over to the fire, and you watch as the fire embers kind of like light up and then Falfer's face is kind of like, like he's blowing into the fire and the embers light and they glow for a bit. And he's, he, you watch as he hunch, he's hunched over, he's kind of back to you and you don't necessarily know what he's doing. The, the embers go dark and the tent goes dark again and then you hear footsteps. His footsteps. Like his footsteps? Walking away. Okay. Like outside? Perception check. Wow. Nat twenty. <gasps> yes, it sounds like he's leaving. Total the of tent. twenty-five. All right. <laughs> so uh I'm gonna I'm gonna follow him sneakily. Okay. Give me a stealth check. I have Disadvantage because of my armor, so this will be fun. Not bad, 16. Okay. Falfer, as you stealth out of the tent, 
Uh, give me a perception check and tell me where you're going. Okay. Um, <clears throat> perception check is a uh, 22. And I am going to just beyond the, just to where the forest edge is dark enough. I'm not going into the forest. Okay. I'm just going to the forest's edge. There's, there's a palisade around Gakkes, so you would have to either scale a wall to get to the forest or leave through one of the gates. So then what I'm trying to do is get to the darkest area within the shades of the palisade walls. Okay. That would be right behind the Dawnbringer tent kind of area. Okay. I'm assuming, Great. Esmeralda, you stay in your own Vardo. You're not in the room, in the tent with the rest of them. Oh, no, I cast, I, I've been casting Magic Circle all night, so I've been with the group. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So you want to go in the so yeah. So you, so you yeah. Uh, Sterling, you watch as Falfer turns the corner out of the tent, um, and Falfer, you hear the sound of um, heavy footfalls behind you that sound like they're trying to be quiet. Okay, I uh, I will uh, I will pretend to pee outside the back of the tent. Okay. And, uh, and and coming back to the the front of oh the, the, the Sterling <laughs> I'm sorry I woke you um come <laughs> let's go back to bed and uh, and uh, yeah this time what I'm going to attempt to do is wait until Sterling is in his position and strategically place myself so that I am out of his view. Okay, so that's. Difficult because he he has his back against the back. Like I don't. Uh, well, well, Sterling, first of all, tell me where you go. Yeah, uh, generally for centuries rest, I'll watch the area that's the biggest threat. So I'd keep my eyes on a doorway or entrance yeah. or something. So I imagine he has his back against the back of the tent, and then yep. he's watching the door. So that the back of the tent is right here. So unless okay. you were like in the forty-five right beside him. Okay. But so it's I'll dark. Like... But it's also dark. And he doesn't have night vision, so... Okay, so here, here's what I'm going to do, Jay. Yeah. I'm going to position myself pretty close to him, maybe three feet away along yeah. the side of the tent. Okay. And and once we're all settled yeah. and people are breathing their sleep breath, yeah. <laughs> yeah. everyone has, um, I'm going to roll back out of the tent underneath the edge of the tent stealth rather than check. go out the door. One more stealth check as you wait for Sterling to get back into his sentry's rest. Okay. Should I make a damn, perception? Damn it, D&D &D Beyond! Would you just roll something for me? Ugh. It would be your passive, oh. Sterling, I think, um, in your sentry's rest, which is higher. <laughs> so you hear the back of the tent lift as what Falfer, you effort? go out. And you don't know, Falfer, whether he heard you or not. You're trying to be as All quiet right. as you can, but you you get out the bottom of the tent. And you hear okay. you hear the sound of I canvas of the... Sterling to your right. I... Let it go, because okay. I trust him, and I figure that he's probably just going to do something to, I don't know, maybe maybe he's just pulling a prank or something, but sure. um, I, I, I'm going to let it go. Okay. Respect. Okay. Okay, I'll go to the edge of the Palisade wall, and I'll just, I'll just douse this gray oil all over my body. Okay. All right. Um, give me <laughs> an intelligence check. Okay. <laughs> you know um, you're using it wrong. <laughs> when when the DM's like, this is a gracious. <laughs> I'm gonna give you one here. <laughs> this is a gracious Dear's DM little moment. Dear little Falfer, trust yourself. That's all I wrote down. So, <laughs> just kidding. Do you want to um, read? The, want me to read the note one more time? Secret to enter his castle. Apply the oil on your body, is what it says. Okay, <laughs> let me read it again. One more. Sure. Time. Everybody, take your ears out, please. Ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I'll I'll read the part that is specific. Yeah. Just the part of the instructions. Okay. Not enough. I have the secret of entering his castle and the means to do so if we strike a bargain. I will give you this information when you come visit. You will yep. find me where you lost your last friend. Mm -hmm. Perhaps the only true friend you had. Unfortunate, 
You didn't know that at the time until it was too late. Just apply the entirety of this oil to your body when you arrive and we can finally speak again face to face while you're awake. Okay. So having forgotten <laughs> the note, I'll take the oil yeah. and I'll yeah. start dousing it on yeah. putting it on my body. Yeah. And then and then uh since nothing happens, I'm assuming. No, I'm like not part of it. No, when you put part of it on, it tingles a little bit. Um, and it's cool to the touch, but nothing happens. Okay, so then I'll recognize I'm probably doing something wrong. Yeah. And uh, shoot, I guess I'll, I guess I'll head out to where Muskoka died. Okay. And How where, far away is that? And where is that? Uh, the place where he died. <laughs> yeah. Um, where did he die, Joel? <laughs> he died. I, I do care about him. I just. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, Argen Vostolt. No. No. Berez. He died at the at the oh, Babalos yes, Sagas right. hut. Yeah. That's right. Babalos Sagas hut. Okay. So you're looking at a. Let me just check here real quick with the thing map. You're looking at a one, two, three four and a half hour walk if you take the roads okay if you don't can i take a horse you're looking at about an hour but then you have to cross a. you can absolutely yeah you can go and take a horse if you want it'll speed it up somewhat but again horses move at the same speed -ish. yeah we can figure it out okay but, yeah i so you can get there in like two hours an hour and a half two hours Okay. And as you come out, you know, uh, you think it's probably around, um, probably about three in the morning. Eesh. Okay. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna rethink my timing. Um, you. Just giving you the information. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm going to. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna. Shoot, I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna do it. Okay. Season finale, YOLO. Yeah, um, okay. <laughs> actually, it's not really true in this game. You live a bunch of times. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm. I'm going to. Well, uh, I'm ask, going ask to. That's Muskoka. Go <laughs> exactly. Okay. Um, Everybody I'm... can put your ears back in. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going though. Jay. Okay. All right. You're yeah. gonna get a horse. Yep. One of the horses you took from. Okay. Yep. So you head to the to the stable. Um. At this time, you're amazed that there are still some Vistani up and about, and you kind of nod at them, whatever, and you just untie the horse, and you head out through the north gate, um, and you start along your path. It takes you about... I just put you guys all in, even though you're not necessarily here at the moment. I don't want you guys to be out for too long. Mm -hmm. um, you travel the hour and a half to two hours that it takes to get back to where you wanted to go. Um, um, cool. You head south along the path, past Argen Vostolt, along or alongside the valley, and you notice that as you're as you're riding along and. You don't really come across anything. You come across some weird followers, on, uh, stragglers on the road. Um, but keeping to the road, thankfully, even at this time of night in Barovia, you make it there safely, amazingly enough. But around the 5 o'clock in the morning, 4.35 o'clock, you start to see the dawn starting to come. And it's not bright light, but at least that dull gray light that occurs and as you're riding down you notice that your shadows seem longer and more gaunt even the horse than they typically are as you ride mm. the rest of you um start to wake um and it's you know you start to hear the roosters in the camp um, and things happen quite, or start quite early here in Gakkus. I'd say about the seven o'clock in the morning sort of time frame. Um, as you kind of all wake, you look around the tent, and Falfer is not there. Really quickly, 
We've been here for two nights. This is the third night. Therefore, we have taken a long rest. Oh, of course. I still have my hit point reduction. Yes. I want to do something, but this is the PG-13 channel. Okay. Um, I love you. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, cool. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go to Wolfsbane and just look for him there. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, morning. Uh, Where is Falfur? Uh, he probably wanted to take a stroll or something. Is, uh... He snuck out. He's had night. hags after him. Nobody I didn't have any hag after me. Yeah, it's been... In this moment, Sterling, you remember that the corner of the tent lifted. He it's snuck out nice. in the night. But having, having this conversation, I, I would just suggest to them he's probably just gone for breakfast. Yeah. Like, well, Tra Travas, that's yeah. what he. Yeah, you you've already uh, left. You, you as they started, did you wait? Well, I would say that, like, as we're all waking up, noticing that he's not sure. there, it would be logical that he's just he's just gone to get something to eat. Yeah, I think we <laughs> like, could have a conversation like every morning. As, as you left to the Rivers Bane. I mean, the Rivers Bane. Wolfsbane. The Wolfsbane. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Wolfsbane. Wolfsbane. There are Banes. Um, <laughs> La last night, he snuck out of the tent, and he went under the side, expecting that I wouldn't see. Really? Really? <laughs> I assumed he was just up to normal falfa mischief. I trusted him, and I'm unsure why it has taken him so long to return. Hmm. We are in Gacchus. What what harm could come to him? I'm sure he didn't go far. I've seen him look at uh, you know some of the the people around here with amorous eyes. Did he uh, leave a note or something somewhere telling us? Trying to just look around and see if there's anything. No. And did you check all your things as well, Falfer? All your gear? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Even his gear. Oh, his gear. Okay. Yeah. Is his oh. gear, is his as you gear start gone? to look around, you notice that his gear is gone. Okay. So I'll be noticing that for the first time because otherwise I would have followed him. Yeah. I mean, I'm... I can. I can maybe figure things out but um i don't i don't know do we think he's in danger he very well maybe if he brought his gear then he probably left gacchus uh, he always spoke of hunting maybe he went to 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 hunt his breakfast right boxes again if he took his own like him. if he took his belongings that means he left willingly yes maybe Why? he's okay I don't know. Hmm. Should we, uh, should we wait, have breakfast, and if we don't find him by noon, maybe we should start looking. I feel like if he's not eating right now, we should go. Hmm. Uh, I'd like to go to the, the North Tower, um, and I'll ask like Sash or Tael or whoever's there, uh, ask who was on guard at night and see if they saw him going. Yeah, so let's just say for the sake of brevity that you all, you, you, you search Wolfsbane, you don't find him there. You go to the tower, you find out who was on watch. They said that he left hours ago, probably about four hours ago, mm -hmm. um, and hasn't been back since, hasn't come through back through the, th the gate. They didn't ask any questions. There was nothing, there was no discussion traded. Uh, did, he, did he take a direction? horse? Yes. To the horse? He yeah. took a horse. One a of the pony, smaller ponies, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which direction? Did he have to put a go? silver piece in to get He went to out through the going? north gate. They said that he traveled up through the foothills and then he disappeared. Let's get back to Falfer. Falfer, you start to enter the surroundings of Berez. Very mm. familiar, unfortunate territory for you. You start to cross the swampy landscape as there's a couple things that you notice that are different. Um, the ground seems alive with movement and there are like areas of tiny little spiders, but just everywhere. And as you kind of move your horse, they kind of like dissipate out in front of you mm. as if they're kind of allowing you to pass. You watch as there are little figurines hanging from little strings kind of in the trees, 
hundreds as you cross. And as you pass. Um, and as you kind of get close to the one of them, you notice that they're tiny little carved fig uh, visages of Muskoka. You continue deeper and deeper into the swamp until you finally come to the site of Baba Lesaga's hut. And it's just like you left it. Burnt down. Timbers. A stick with a rotted skull on it. And then you look to the left and you see what's left of the funeral pyre from Muskoka. What do you do? I go over to um, to the pile of ashes from Muskoka's pyre. And I pull out the vial. Uh, I already have some of it on my neck and face. Yeah. And so I assume that's been dealt with. And I, I strip down to my halfling two and a half foot tall self. Okay. And I, I just like... I'm like, free them, and I, I, I pour it on my on my body, and I scrub it all around, and then I just, in an in an act of uh, of research, and and consternation, I lay down on the pile of ashes, uh, where Muskoka's body was, burned, okay, and uh, I just close my eyes and wait. You climb up onto the pyre, or what's left, and you lie down. And you close your eyes, and you feel your body tingle. And when you open up your, up your eyes, the world around you is gray. The sounds of the swamp are muted. Everything seems like it's faded into the background slightly. And you feel almost weightless, like if you wanted to, you could move up, you could move down. As if you're no longer tethered to the earth by gravity. You lift your hand and you look at it and you can see that it's semi-translucent and you look through it. Even your gear, your weapons, gray, lying at the wait, foot wait. of the pyre. <laughs> I took now I took my clothes yep. off yep. prior to Oh yep. crap. I sure did. What was I thinking? Anyways, continue. Just tell them the water was cold. <laughs> as, you, as you lie on the pyre, mm -hmm. you... Well, what do you do? You're looking up and you see just gray branches, trees. Yeah. And you look to one direction. Um, again, lucid, lucidly uh, aware yeah. of yeah. the... Yeah? yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, uh, I do uh, move... I do move up off the ground. Okay. So you hover a little bit. And as yeah. you kind of hover, you kind of come up like this. And you can see you're actually moving through the pyre that existed. As oh. if objects are no longer an obstacle for you. Mm. And the first thing you notice is that standing where the cottage was is a fully opaque cottage the same version hmm. but it is full color on a grayscale canvas world and you watch closely as parts of it vines are almost weaving itself back together as if the cottage is regrowing itself before hmm. you you then instantly feel a presence near you and as you turn to your right to look, sitting on the edge of the funeral pyre is a semi-translucent Muskoka. Muskoka, as you sit contemplating your new life, as you sit after having toured Barovia, realizing you can't leave with no purpose, you have now settled into the place where you fell, contemplating over and over the actions of that day. 
And as you turn to your left, you see Falfer. But for the first time since you passed, he's naked. <laughs> and Sorry. he's in full color. Not the gray <laughs> that you saw previously. Okay. <clears throat> what do I know about this vial? Nothing. Okay. Nothing. Okay. Um, I will move towards him. How far away is he? He's just four feet from you on the other edge of the, of the funeral pyre. Did, did, am I aware that, that Falfer got naked, rubbed oil on himself and lay in my ashes? No. no? Okay. That's, that's going to help. This is the first time that you're aware of him. Although you okay. do see his belongings in gray at the foot of the pyre. So I will move towards him. Um, and put a, a hand out and just rest it on his shoulder. And, and you feel it, Falfer, as if it's a real living hand. How, how did you get here? I, uh, I was, I was given a note and, uh, it was, uh, it was from Morgantha and she told me how to, to get here. Uh, I did not, honestly, I did not know I would be seeing you again. Why would you want to come here? Why would you listen to Morgantha? Uh, I have so little, uh, understanding of why you st why you stay why you go of the different different planes of i'm i'm simply trying to make heads and and tails of the situation i'm honestly i'm i'm just trying to explore what the potential is with uh with <laughs> trying to get these hags out of my stupid head oh by the way i'm sorry i'm I'm totally nude in front of you. It's for yeah. no particular reason. Yeah, I can't imagine there's a great reason. There isn't. Um, am I aware the hag is completely on my plane, right? You can is, tell. Is she, she on the, You can tell. The you can tell the cottage is there. Yeah. Um, you just recently came back. Um, yeah. But you've seen her leave the cottage and come back yeah and she was one of the, one of the first creatures that i saw on this side yeah you've also okay, watched so... one other that looks a lot like her and yeah. then another that is not that has greenish skin is uh hmm. larger in size um yeah they're they're here but why I really don't know why you would ever choose to come. I I know why now. You you've seen them. Come. Yeah. Muskoka, my dear friend, I I I don't know if, if this is possible for you, but maybe even from this side you could you could help us. Maybe maybe take down the hags from here. I, I, I'm not sure if, if you could, but that would, it would, it would set us up for success rather than constantly being berated in our dreams. Is she still coming after you? All the time. Aren't you lighting the fires? It, uh, I think perhaps we were misled by some, oh. uh, extra people that we should yeah. not have listened to that would make sense mm. how, how am i gonna help her how am i gonna help you i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna fight her by myself here well, I'm, I'm, gonna... I'm here right now i mean i have some skills without weapons uh, perhaps i don't know maybe it, it, it... Have I ever observed, I mean, I haven't observed them very much, I guess, but 
what I know of a way that people are able to move through the planes, like they mm. that that the hags would. Do I have any idea how I would bring the hags to the plane that Give the me an arcana check. on? Oh, I don't have my. Oh, I do have my stat sheet. Just a second. <laughs> Actually, and that, that well, yeah, that wouldn't be. It would be the other stat sheet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. It would be the ghost um, stat sheet, not, not, not. Oh, it's a natural ghost. twenty. Okay, very good. Boom. Um, I feel like I've got a good idea. You've actually watched her kind of come in and out of the border ethereal to the material plane and then mm. back, and you've seen her transition a, a number of times, often to hang these little carved effigies. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay. Um, you don't necessarily know how she's doing it. You've never seen the means by which she does it. I will relay. But you've also seen her daughter do it, but you've never seen the other one do it, the green one do it. So it's when they travel through to hang the effigies. That's the only time around this area that you've seen them do that. Hmm. I, I'll communicate this to Val for... Um, I've, I've seen her... I've seen Morgantha move through the planes to the material world to hang the effigies. Other than that, I I don't know when when you could you could trap her when you could encounter her. But I think maybe maybe it's not us. Predictable maybe, time. Maybe, maybe it's not me, Muskoka. Maybe your whole purpose for your time in Barovia was to be this for us. You could be our protector. You could trap her here and then she could not move back and forth. This well, could be- how, I don't know how I would. I, I don't have gear and stuff, right? Like I don't have, I don't have stuff. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a spirit. Yeah, you're still, you're have, still- I'm a spirit, Falfer. I don't have, I don't have anything. How am I? How would I trap her here? We, I couldn't stop her when I was alive. How would I stop her in her world with nothing? At that moment, Falfer, on the stagnant, swampy air, you smell a welcome scent. The smell of meat pies on the breeze. Mm. emanating clearly from the cottage. She's here. I, uh... Oh, shoot. Um, I'll... I'll attempt to approach the hut without her knowing. Okay, give me a stealth so, check. Oh. Yeah. Where are you going? I just At I just want to see if she's here. I, I know she's here. I saw her. 23. Uh, okay. Alright. Um, as you kind of get up, you start to float, and you're just drifting above the ground. And it's this weightless feeling as you approach the front. The door is closed, uh, as usual. Can I try to stop him? You can absolutely try. Okay, I, I want to try to get between him and, and the house and say, "What are What are you doing? How, how do you think that's going to end?" I, I, I just, I need, I need them out of my head. <laughs> I need to figure this out. I need to, while I'm here, I must either defeat her, or you must defeat her. But we cannot continue and defeat Strahd with these stupid hags coming after us in the night. I must do something, Muskoka. I must. You hear a voice say, Falfa, I'm waiting. Oh, that definitely means you don't go. She's never waiting for something good. You, you you can't go you can't go now uh, um you told me that there's 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 a new hag does that mean that they're 
uh their their co coven coven threesome is that is that all back together like working how it was full power I don't know if you would know that necessarily. Um, have you guys dis discussed that in game as characters? Yeah, we have. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So you don't know. Some, one some checks asked. back in the old episode. Yeah, there's three of them now, and you know that three witches make a coven. Um, but another point, you've never seen the green one ethereal, actually. That's a good point. Oh. The, the oh, green cool. one travels on the material plane that you know of. You've never, You've always seen her gray and on the material plane. But they must be trying to bring her over. Oh, uh, I, I'm just <sighs> Muskoka. I'm at my wit's end, and I'm it, here. I, I, I'm not going with you. I, I'm not. Huh. I'm sorry. What do you have I'm to lose? Gonna, well, I'm <laughs> sure I, I'm not going to go and just die again just be, just because you're having bad dreams. That's for sure. Um. I'm pretty sure you, my friend, you are already gone. I mean, I laid on a pile of ashes just right over there. You are definitely dead. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure something else could happen. Like, what, what do I know of? Like, can I, can I die when I'm dead? Like, what happens now if I go in there and just start fighting something? Like, you don't know. Somebody's got to be able to lose. Yeah, you don't know. <laughs> no, no, listen, Muskoka. I mean, we have friends who have a corporeal being back in, uh, even though they are dead, they are undead. So we know that your soul has power. You can do things. You are here talking to me. If you can talk to me, you can do things. Can I use Let's magic? go in there and defeat in her together. Do you have the abilities that are listed in that, in, in your in your sheet, in, in that monster sheet? What a monster As sheet. a ghost. If you look up I Ghost in D&D &D Beyond, oh, yeah, that's your stats. Falfa, you can bring your <laughs> friend to... I just want to talk. Please. See, she just wants to talk. Come. She never She never wants to talk. No, she just. She said just now she wants to talk. Oh, man. All I have is possession, which I've given a whirl before. Um, but man, I don't know if that's gonna work. Okay. I mean, I um, try, but like. <sighs> okay, DM, give give me give me a give me a little bit of something here. I I need to know: is there anything on that note that I am not aware of that can be useful right now? Just do a gimme. There's a DM gimme. <laughs> You're, you're the, you are. I feel like you got one when you were like, I rub it all over my body. <laughs> yeah. You, 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 would you, you shut you. up right now? <laughs> oh my gosh. I, honestly, uh, uh, at this point, it's kind of like a, like a, I'll keep my, I'll keep my ears open for something, but like, what am I going to do? No, here, here's the deal. <laughs> Muskoka, I know what it is. I know I am here. It, it is to defeat Strahd. I remember now. I have the note in my head. Yes. Can you Here's give me a wisdom said. saving throw, Falfer? Yes. Sure. Oh my gosh. That's good because I uh, I am a super wise, as you can all tell. Oh, natural one, but I am a halfling, and thus will re-roll as opposed to the last time I rolled a natural one and went into double death saves. Um, here's my new roll. Uh, that is a 19, Jay. You feel um, drawn by the smell, but you're able to, at this point, not allow it to overcome you. Okay, I, uh, I'll, I'll say, I'll say to him, I, I know I am here. She will give me a way into Strahd's castle, and I will be able to defeat him with the Dawnbringers. I feel like oh, your which... request is a little bit unclear at this point, whether I'm supposed to keep her here or bring her to you guys. It, it, you no, know. in fairness to you, I was not clear. And that's because I I really, uh, I just it just came to me now. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> this is the reason why I came. It's because in this little note that I got, she gave me a hint that I would be able to get into Strahd's castle and that would be our way to defeat him. 
What what say you, Muskoka? Join me. We will we will easily be able to enter into his his uh, his castle. Alpha, you know I'm getting I'm impatient. I know I have a purpose here, but to be honest, I just died like a, like days ago. A bit more rest would have been nice. Well, how you, how are how how are you how are you going to get into Strahd's castle? I I don't understand why you're here. How I'm supposed to help you? I, I all, don't all I know is that well, first off, I, I do want to say um so, so um clearly there's. There are things that I have done that I should not have done, and I apologize. So let me take this moment <laughs> to just apologize to you, my friend. Okay. Water <laughs> under said bridge. Now, let us go to Morgantha and get into Strahd's castle. Or at least find out how. Sh shaking my head. I go with him. Okay. I go with him. <laughs> okay. You both float over as you <laughs> approach the front door to the cottage. And as you approach the door, opens of its own volition. Yeah. He. And as you crest the door, you look inside. And it's a little different than you remember. There are three beds against the back wall. There is a table, round table, piled with meat pies to the right. To the left is a cabinet, much like the other one. In the center of the cottage is an empty crib. At the table, you see the sister, sorry, the daughter. I said sisters before, it's actually the daughter of Morgantha in her night hag form, kneading dough. You watch as a this green-skinned female stands against the back wall, looking at you, her hands like this in front of her. She's wider and warts riddle her face and her body. Her hair hanging, uh, her, her clothes hanging off in rags as she watches. In a rocking chair in front of the fire sits Morgantha, rocking back and forth quietly. <laughs> as you walk through. You notice one thing immediately, and that is that her hands sit on what appear to be a pregnant belly. As you watch, something undulates just under the surface. As she pats her belly with her long black fingernails. And she says, Welcome. There is much to discuss. And that is where we're going to end the season. Whew. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Sorry, rest of the cast, as you had to sit in the background for that. Um, we will be back in two weeks for season four of Into the Mist. Um, it's going to be a good one. Uh, you told to me discuss. to lean on the creepy factor, Joel. It's your fault. <laughs> Uh, thank you everyone for watching. Make sure that you hit the like, uh, the, the, the bell icon, subscribe, like the video, all that stuff. Follow us on, on Twitch um, and all that fun stuff that you need to do. Thank you everyone for all the support and for watching all season. It's been incredible. <laughs> um, next season is going to be even better. Thanks for Matthew Lillard for being here tonight. Tomorrow we will be uh, releasing the Beetle and Grimm Silver Edition um, Guide to Ravenloft, Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft box giveaway for our Patreon slash Discord community. Um, so anyways, stay tuned. We love you guys. There's lots happening these two weeks on our, our Discord. So even though we're off for two weeks, 
There's going to be lots of events and quests and seminars. In fact, tomorrow night for the Weavers, I'm doing a seminar on narrative level ups um, and discussing how I do those and how to implement those in your own home games. Thank you, everyone. Love you guys. Uh, Love things you guys. are starting to open up. So, hoping and praying that we can be around the table soon. Um, have a good night, and we'll see you in two weeks. <laughs>